pew 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 Happy Gravy Day, gang! Happy Gravy Day! Friggin' Gravy Day, episode 339. Your best friends are back. And we're doing this remotely again. It still feels weird, like just looking at you guys on a screen instead of like having y'all here. Like Pat's usually like six beers in, I feel like now. And like you probably are, just you're not in front of me. Doing no, that. this is my first beer of the day. I actually didn't drink uh, while doing my yard work. It was oh. weird. Oh, well, that's good. I feel like most people always drink while doing yard work. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't. You'd be I responsible. <laughs> I don't think most people drink while doing yard work. Yeah, they do. You do mow they? the lawn, you grab a beer. Afterwards. A couple beers. Afterwards. No, during. Do you have a riding lawnmower? No. I was about to say, if you had a riding lawnmower and you had a little cup holder, that'd be pimp. I mean, I when uh, that was actually my graduation present in high school. My dad got himself a riding lawn, lawnmower, and <laughs> I would uh, I would just grab like three beers and go mow the lawn. <laughs> I bought this for me, but you have to fucking use it. Happy graduation. Um, yeah. I guess you made a chore easier? Well, I mean, it was right when we, they moved out to uh, Brookshire and they had two acres, so it was kind of necessary uh, anyway. Yeah. That makes sense. But whatever. Yeah. See, uh, I, I remember uh, like when my brother and I were doing the yard work. Like, did you, when, you, when you first started doing your parents' yard, like when you were a kid, like, you're like, kind of stoked because you get to mow the yard, and then like, that lasts about like, one or two weeks. And you're like, I don't want to do this ever again. This sucks. It oh, I was hot. never stoked. I remember, Dude, like, being, I felt like I was, like, an adult. Like, I was, like, it's mature that I get to mow the lawn. And then I was, like, no, this is the worst thing ever. I hate it. As long as I can remember, I was doing yard work. But we used to have only the uh, push, like, like, you didn't have the, like, automatic thing. And I remember, like, harping on my dad when, like, the mower started crapping out and he'd get it fixed. He knew, like, a lawnmower repair guy. It was awesome and, like, like always hooked him up with deals and stuff. But then he got a John Deere like just push mower but it was one of those that like you had the like little button under it and then it would kind of like the, kick the back wheels so then it wasn't just me having to push it with all of my power the whole time because mm -hmm. before that it was like you get one of those little like grooves in your yard and you're like, Ugh! and it's kind of like it's all uneven and shit and i was like this is awesome it's like an automatic fucking mower right here this is sweet and then like you'd see the neighbors have uh, the worst is like when you're mowing the front yard and you'd see the neighbors but a yard crew and they come with like that big just standing lawnmower and it's just like zoom and they just do a little circle and the whole yard's done you're like fuck <laughs> that took five seconds and that guy's getting paid like forty dollars my dad's just letting me live here well we're already off topic yeah well I know, that's what we do every time so we do every time <laughs> right away right we're talking mowing fellas saying, well this could be a quick one we don't have a lot of stuff to go through and me and robert's faces were just like mm. okay okay chief we all know what's gonna happen. Um, so how have you guys been? Y'all been y'all been quarantining and chilling. I guess you've been going to work, Pat. Robert's been working from home. Yep. But uh it's it's just still fucking weird, man. It's still weird. Like it's just like I know that like it's it's becoming more normal a little bit, it feels like, but it's like I'm scared for it to become normal. Like it's weird going into work every day and like in our parking garage, there's like not even a quarter of the cars that usually were there. And it's, it's, it's weird. Just it's eerie. You know, it still feels eerie. Like when you're driving down the road, you're like, I am get, like, you said you were getting to work faster. Like, isn't it kind of weird? Just like, Oh yeah. Like, like normally I'm it would not used to this. It would take me about 45 minutes to an hour 15, depending on how bad the traffic was. It's 20 minutes from driveway to park in my car at work now. Oh, wow. I mean, because I go like, it saves a lot I'm just of time, going like 75, but... 80 down I 10. Cause like, it's just That's a straight shot down I 10 for me. 80 miles an hour down I-10. What are you, Dale Earnhardt? God, I wish. I mean, he's dead, but... <laughs> oh, I was talking about Junior. Like, no, no, exactly. I do wish I was dead. <laughs> 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 what a relief. I got a... I got a like, I'm just doing this for the video version of the podcast, but I got a sick little mask today. I went to the, to the eye doctor, and she was like, here you go. Got your mask. I was like, this is gold. You just handed me gold, lady. And it was awesome. But I have a Bane mask, which is way better anyways, so... That's cool. Um, I guess we're bullshitting around. Let's just get right to the fucking first segment. And uh, yeah. let's tell everybody where we have been since we were last here. Where you been? 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 Where you gone? Where you gone? Since you been gone? Where you been? Where you been? Where you been? All right. Um, you want to go first, Pat? Yeah. Um, 
it's a lot of work today running some errands uh picked up some etcho and conroe from the liquor store because i had to it's about time to refill on whiskey again nice getting low and uh, i've also noticed uh since all this quarantine has started i don't know how to clear out the apps on my background anymore like every day when my phone starts to get low and i'll be oh i should clear it out like today before this podcast started i had 17 apps running in the background oh wow I'm bad about that. I'll do it like every couple of weeks. And then sometimes it's like, there's just all of my apps are open. Like what the hell was I doing? It used to be like when I was done with it, I would just get rid of it. But ever since all this shit started, I don't know what's going on. I just, I can't remember to clear them out until I'm on like 8% battery. And then I'm like, Oh, this is probably okay. Snapchat. I was on that for two seconds. So here's the podcast app, YouTube notes, email, like every app that's on my phone was somehow up. That's pretty, uh, pretty nuts, man. I close my apps after I'm done using them. I'm bad it's about fine. it. That's how I used to be. I don't know what, I don't know what changed. Out of nowhere, it's just, I don't know, man. The quarantine. I got the quarantine brain. <laughs> corn brain. That's what they call it. I Not thought that was corn. when you eat too much corn. The corn brain. <laughs> Not quarantine. Corn. corn brain, though, would be pretty cool, too. I like corn yeah. brain actually better. Uh, that That's when you're actually, getting head uh, yeah. while you're eating corn. <laughs> I uh, this isn't really a not cool for me, but it kind of is. I was uh, whoa, catching whoa, up. Whoa, 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 whoa! Not, we're not to that part yet, buddy. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. This is not one of my not cools. This is a where you been. Okay. Because uh, I was catching up on an old podcast, and they were just talking about um, uh, like bad offenders in country music who just do pop shit and all that stuff. So I started going back and listening, and. I just, I got really, really mad at guys that should be better in country music and aren't. Like Blake Shelton, he had some great songs early on, Old Red. That's what now he's just gone, like, yeah, and now he's got a song with fucking Pitbull where it's, uh, I mean, he's going to be worldwide uh, that way. Dude, it's terrible. It's, uh, it's called Are You Ready? It's to the and tune nobody of, is. it's to the tune of Black Betty, but instead he goes, Whoa, are you ready? Whoa, are you ready? And it's the worst piece of shit i've heard it forever and then just like people like luke combs too i like luke combs i don't have any, any problem with him but like he'll put out great songs and he just puts out like bro country bullshit and i'm just like God, be better so it is like it's not a full not cool i'm just frustrated with people not being better is it luke combs yeah okay C-O-M-B-S. sometimes i think people are saying luke Holmes, and i'm like are there two of them <laughs> I mean, like, he's a big old boy. There could be two of them. Well, like, I feel like he's always going live on, uh, like, that guy plays, like, 24 hours a day now that everybody's quarantined. Because everybody's sharing Luke Combs, like, quarantine videos. And I'm like, I, like, is this guy always doing a concert, or are y'all just sharing the same shit? Like, that's crazy that he's... I feel he's like, keeping his name out there, man. So, he's making yeah. money. No, that, I mean, that like makes I said, I don't, I don't dislike him. I don't dislike his music. It's just some of it gets a little, a little too just, like, generic. Oh, we're... In a truck, drinking beer on my tailgate. Pretty girl by my sli- side. Like, uh, come on, do fucking better, man. Start singing about Old Town Roads, all right, bro? Like, that's yes. that's, that's when I'm listening, That's you know? real country music. That is country music. I'm glad you finally That shit it. Hank Williams would be proud of. Exactly. Hank Williams probably, like, yeah. He's, is he dead? Yeah, Hank Williams died in, like, Hank Williams Jr., though, is not. Right? <laughs> no. He was the Monday Night Football guy. Yeah. Okay. Hank Williams Jr. is probably, like, a huge Lil Nas X fan. Do you think for this next year they'll like rewrite that song for him when he's like, "All my friends aren't coming over tonight." Oh, dude, that would be good though. Like, you, you just have a little fun with it. If they have to play in front, nope, we're not talking about that. We're not going to talk about playing in front of empty football stadiums. We're going to have football back, okay, guys? We're going to have football yeah. back, and that is like, like uh, I've heard people saying this before, but like that really is what we need to do. We need to have the NFL be like, "Hey, fuck faces." Like, just make PSAs. We run every commercial break on every network. Hey, fuck faces, do you want football? Stay the fucking side. Stay the fucking side. Quit going and hanging out. And, like, there's people that are, like, protesting right now. They're like, well, we want the right to be able to, to do things. We have the freedom to assemble. And it's like, yeah, but now you're all spreading corona. Chill the fuck out. Yeah, fuck it. You want to see Bama play this year? Stay the fucking side. Right? I think it's Bama USC, isn't it? I don't know. There's like a big, there's a big USC game I know that like is like the first week of the college football season. It's like, dude, don't fuck that up or we don't get that. 
And college football is really going to be fucked anyways, which is actually kind of funny because college football does deserve to get fucked because they don't really pay their players. And it's like, haha, now you didn't make that money off of the guys that you don't pay legally. Yeah, but I don't care. I still want to see – like, I think they just need to panic and go, fuck it. Uh, we'll pay the players for the video game. Make the video game now. Dude, for real. I would buy NCAA this second. Like this, this I'd second, be like, guys, right hold now. on. I'm going to go turn my Xbox on and pre-order it right now. If they told it was me my, that it was coming It was out. my favorite game. I like it more than Madden. Always did. I liked it a lot, but like I hated it because there was always people like on Madden, even if like, like there's people that are way better than me at Madden. Like when I was good at Matt, like when I was playing Madden all the time, but like on NCAA, there was like a level that you could, that, like people could get to where it was like, all right, I'm never going to be there. Like I'm fucked. And like you could sometimes catch somebody on Madden, but like if you could just master the fucking triple option and you'd play people, you're like, ah, this game's over. Like I'm not gonna play this game anymore. I'm not gonna do it. It was just it was just fun building a dynasty with your favorite school. Or trying to win the Heisman, starting from oh, yeah. scratch on like like a fucking random team, like playing for like Bowling Green, and then all right, cool. Let's see if we can build Bowling Green up. I would always make my own college because I was a Michigan fan in high school, and so I would just like. I think uh, I, I like looked up random cities in Michigan. I was like, I was the Pontiac somebody, and it was like they were maroon and black. <laughs> and I would just like, I, I think they were the Bulldogs, the Pontiac Bulldogs. We had little bones on our helmet. I want to say like the little stickers, like Georgia did. And it was like I would just do that. But like, all right, they're out, they're out of nowhere, and now they're they're beating Ohio State tight. And like I don't know, Cinderella like, story out of nowhere. Amazing. Um. So yeah, you've uh, yeah. That's that, that's where I've been. All right, Bobby jokes. What about you, buddy? So I do have an actual shed, not this room that I'm in, that people thought everyone kept thinks, everyone kept saying, oh, is he in a shed? Is he in a shed? No, I was in a room, but I do have an actual shed and I spent uh, the weekend cleaning that up because I'm going to move the stuff from my storage unit into that shed. The storage unit's going to be mess. gone? Yeah. Aww. I, I think last time I said that they had raised the, the yeah. rent. I'm not going to pay that. And so I've cleaned that up. Me? Yeah. No, this is the wrong time. Other than that, uh, Easter, you know, just grilled here at home. Did you do the that old Zoom it. Easter with anybody or was everybody there? Uh, so it was just, you know, me, my mom, my brother, and Sam. Okay. No big family. My cousin, I think I, guess I told you last week, she was pregnant. She had her baby like Thursday. So no big like family gathering or anything like that. Congrats to her on the sex. Yeah. And the unprotected guess, sex. You don't know that, you know. <laughs> wait, 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 yeah, that's a good point. That's, that's a good point. It's true. We can't rule anything out here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, cleaning the shed, working from home, grilling here for Easter. That's what's up. Yeah, um, I did the, uh, the old Zoom Easter dinner with my parents and my brother um just because obviously you know like we can't we couldn't all be together but uh that was interesting it was like like i just uh i actually ordered crawfish kept the streak alive 13 consecutive weeks we're uh we're nine weeks away from tying the record fellas i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do the streak just but i could i could probably just do it based on bb's it's just not gonna be as fun ranking them like it was fun going to a different place and having to find a different place to go to every single week. This is kind of like BB's has good quality crawfish. So I'm not upset. Like the crawfish are pretty big this time of year, but, uh, and they were really good, but it was just like, uh, I got on zoom entered, they did the meeting and then had the, the crawfish delivered. And like, then like, it was funny cause you couldn't like touch the screen since then just had crawfish hands. So I was like, well, hold on. I have to go wash my hands first <laughs> and do this. But, uh, yeah. So the crawfish streak is going on. Did the zoom Easter with the family which was uh it was weird but it was okay and like i think we're all just adjusting to like zoom is just a part of life now and then uh pretty much like i've been just pumping out content man like uh i i feel like this is like maybe the only time in our life that we're just gonna have this much of a captive audience i feel like regardless of what you're doing everybody's just sitting on their couch scrolling on their phone and like if i see somebody go live on facebook or twitter or anything i'll be like let me just let me just check out what's going on. Like uh, Barstool's uh, Dave Portnoy has been doing unboxing videos where people just send him random shit. And I saw actually Southern Star send him a bombshell blonde and he opened that, which is pretty tight. But, uh, and I saw he today, he got, or last night he got live chickens. Like somebody sent him baby chickens, live baby chickens. And so he was like, I got to get rid of it. Somebody these. sent him a hooker. Did they? Yeah, I saw, he was like on the phone during his unboxing <laughs> and he's like, 
So yeah, so I don't know who did this or that. Like, what do we need to do to make make this right? He's like, are you in the building? She's like, yeah. And he goes, how did you get into my building? <laughs> He's like, oh, so like, what do I do? Do I just like meet you in the lobby and like break you off some cash and we're cool? <laughs> Like he was cool about That's it. He was funny. like, yeah, I mean, you know, you went out of your way. I'm, I'll pay you, but would you like to have? Some, would you like a snack? <laughs> <laughs> we can make some mores. That, I mean, it would have been phenomenal content if he would have brought her like on camera. But you know, I doubt she wanted to be on camera, being like, "Hi, mom, I'm a hooker." Well, he could like do what Dwight did with the stripper, where he just made her answer phones. Or like he's just like, no, you need to help me unbox. So you start cutting open boxes and passing them to me. Like he just puts that it to work for however smart. long they got her. You're here for, look, good. we have you for two hours. You're gonna be here for two hours. You're gonna work for two hours. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna pay you, but you're gonna be doing work. Or one of the <laughs> jackass movies when they like, I think they're in Paris and they got the hookers, and then they just made them paddle boat race. I don't remember that. That was pretty funny. Uh, maybe they're in Amsterdam, but, uh, that was pretty funny. And then like, I just, I don't know. I've been doing content, content, content. I did, uh, if you guys haven't already listened to the, the bonus episode this week, I told you guys I'm going to try and do two episodes a week. All right. And I got Patrick McClellan on and I tell you like Patrick McClellan, like a lot of times we have him on just at like the live events and stuff. That guy is, is fun as fuck. He gets wild. He got weird. He pulled out the Hitler card a little early, but like, hey, I'm, I just, I'm gonna let him go. He's a fun guy. He's a funny guy. Hitler, not so much funny, but like, we get it. It was a joking manner. He's not pro Hitler or anything. Well, you don't like know that. if Hitler was a funny guy or not. I, I don't think so. He doesn't seem like he, he was, was a dick. Just because you're a dick doesn't mean you can't be funny. He tried to wipe out an entire group of people, so I'm gonna say he probably wasn't that funny. You, I'm just saying you don't know. I'm not trying to like. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna like go, trying to I'm find gonna lean good towards to say not about funny. Hitler. It seems like you are, but uh, Patrick McClellan was fun. We did a bonus podcast on Saturday, and then uh, Bobby Jokes and I, we sat down. I guess I was going to keep it a secret, kind of, but I'm just – we sat down with the one and only Cliff Hogg, Big Brother 21, ever heard of him, Houston's own, fourth place on last season's Big Brother. Uh, we, we sat down with him for about two hours last night. We're going to release that on Monday, but that was, I had a lot of fun on that. I, I guess you probably got that, Robert. That, like, I was just, I was geeking out, man. Yeah, definitely. Alex was like nerding out. He was, he was so excited. He just couldn't stop talking, asking questions like, oh, what about this? What about this? Oh, did they do this behind the scenes? Or what's that like? We'd be like in like an actual like discussion. Like, well, hold on. Now, like the music, how do you do this? Like, how do you do this? What's the backyard like? Tell me this. And it was just like, I was so scatterbrained, but like, I, I was like, I've never, before we did this, I was like telling Robert, like, I've never been this nervous to do a podcast with somebody before. Like, this is Cliff Hogg. This is crazy. And it's like, it's just a big brother guy. It doesn't matter. He was like one of my faves. He's awesome. And uh, he's, he's from H Town. So he was cool. Y'all get to hear that on Monday. It's actually a big brother or a Pass the Gravy and Pass the Gravy Bro crossover episode. So it'll be on both platforms. And uh, I just want, you know, we got to populate Pass the Gravy. So technically, it also counts as me doing two podcasts at the same time. We should send him some beer. Uh, he said he wants to go up to the brewery with us when everything clears up. So we got, oh, we got a, a Southern Star date with Cliff Hogg, which will be pretty fun. Um, but that's a pretty fun interview. Maybe we can get him to talk cat into joining us. Yeah, he said he talks to her on the reg, so that would be cool. Um, but, but for real, though, like, I know that like, if you guys don't watch Big Brother, then you may, seem, you may like, not think this is interesting. But really, we got him on because like, he was, like, Cliff was quarantined in a house for a whole summer. So he is an expert at being quarantined and how to get through a quarantine. So we talked to him about, about, that. about that a little bit, which like we do talk big brother. I was nerding out about that, but just, I think like, I think it's fun to listen to regardless of if you're, you're a big brother fan or not. So definitely listen to the bonus Monday episode we have coming up this next week with Cliff Hogg. It was one of my favorite ones I've ever had to do. And I uh, appreciate you, Robert, for, for hopping on that with me. But uh, that was a lot of fun. So I've been doing the, the bonus podcast content. Um, obviously, Alex's Race Wars still going on. And uh, it's pretty awesome. Tonight, tonight is uh, Wacky Wednesday, which is I'm just going to race the cars backwards. Like They're going to be going in reverse the whole way. So that's pretty fun. And uh, then I got some popcorn kernels. We're going to start having pop-offs where I just put three popcorn kernels and see who pops the fastest. Okay, I was wondering what the fuck you meant by pop-offs. We, we can bet on them. So it'll be like, do I want to bet left, middle, or right? I don't know. Who goes first? And then whoever pops first, that's who wins. I know Pretty we say this stuff. every week, too, but we need to finally just, like, start playing each other in some video games, streaming some Madden. Yeah. Yeah, I don't – I uh, I gotta download Madden again. I gotta I gotta re-download it because like all the Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead takes up a lot of takes up a lot of memory on the old Xbox. Do you have uh, Chell? 
I do not have chill. <laughs> we got to get something that we can play each other in. Um, like but, Red Dead, we can't play against each other, really. We could play with. We could be a posse, bro. We could. We, I mean, we, we were so jacked up about starting the Gravy Gang on there and then never fucking did it. Yeah. We have a bad habit of doing that shit, don't we? Um, <laughs> but then, um, so I've just been just pumping out content, man. The Rod Ryan show is going five hours every morning now. So, like added an extra hour to the morning show and then i'm gonna soon be streaming uh be live streaming uh two times a day whether it be race wars or pop-offs we're doing bonus podcasts every week until i can't i think maybe i'm gonna try i don't know if you guys have any guests that like and like lil nas x if y'all want to blow him up that's cool like blow up his twitter but like let's not be obnoxious but like let's just be polite and i think eventually he'll come around right he's stuck at home too so why wouldn't he want to come on the podcast but uh, if you guys have any other uh, guests that you think we should have, I'm not going to guarantee we'll have them on, but, like, let us know. Maybe tag us. We told you guys y'all are kind of our agents, so, like, start tagging people. And uh, if, if they're cool, a cool interview, I think, then we'll do that. Or else I'll just I'll start finding other interviews. But uh, I, wanna do, I, want, I want you guys to have some extra content. For, uh, for your quarantine while, while a lot of you guys are stuck at home. Um, but then uh, another thing, it's, uh, it could have been a comeback kid, but I'm going to just use it as where you've been because it's where I have been. And it's my eye injury that I had um, last year. My friend poked me in the eye with a hat. I had to wear sunglasses for like a whole week. And my eye dilated constantly. And the, uh, I think it was Monday morning, I woke up and opened my eyes and it just felt like something in my eye just ripped was not fun then I in the mirror my eye was all swollen shut almost it was the worst it just watered for two days so uh i was like maybe i can just suffer through it and it'll heal all right let's just see how this goes and then i was like you know what why don't i just call the eye doctor and be like hey just a couple questions i know everything's going on right now but like i think i re-injured it you said that could happen again i because apparently it's a, it was a, a corneal abrasion is what it was and she was like the first time i got it she was like well you know if you don't keep your eyes moist all the time like you could have this re-injure itself like you could it, it, i think my eyes were just dry and it stuck to the eyelid when i opened it it just peeled off that uh healed up layer so right back to square one not great and uh, i've had to go to the eye doctor the last two days and i got some i got some eye drops and stuff so it, it's it's improving she said i was 25 percent better today than i was yesterday but uh Shout out to my doctor though. She's been actually pretty cool. She was like texting me, checking up on me and stuff. And uh, like, like they're only open for emergency appointments. So I got feel like a fucking rock star going there. Cause like I show up and then she comes up in her car and then unlocks it and then has to go turn off the alarm. And then she just see, she has to like log on to the computer and everything. And then like when I'm done, she just cleans up and like locks up. And it's like, this is awesome that like, I just got her to open this whole place, which I feel like a dick a little bit, but like, I was kind of just calling to be like, Hey, just, I need a consultation. Like, is this something I should worry about? Like, I'd like to look at it. So I went in and like did all that shit, but like eye injuries suck. Eye injuries suck. I would never wish an eye injury on anything. I have told you as multiple times on the podcast, like eye stuff is my biggest, like, no, I hate that. I can't wear contacts because I don't want anything touching my eye. I hate going to the eye doctor. I hate going to like where they do that puff of, that puff of air into your eye. I'm not about that at all. And uh, it's the worst. It's the worst. So like kind of having blurry vision in one eye, having it constantly water. Like if you're watching the video version of it, it's uh, you can definitely see that my right eye over here is not open all the way right now. Because it's, it's Forrest Whitaker eye. Swollen. It's not Forrest Whitaker because it's not 100% lazy, but like, yeah, I guess. Nah, you got the Forrest Whitaker eye going. I hate it, it, and I hope it's not stuck this way forever because I don't know. Like, see, if I open my eyes all the way, like, it kind of looks normal, but it still doesn't. If you open your eyes all the way, you just look like you're on cocaine. Yeah, but would I really look like that or Forrest Whitaker? I mean, Forrest Whitaker is a fucking badass. He is a badass, but like, just get lost in that eye, I guess. Saul Guerrero, baby. Uh, so yeah, I, I've been battling an eye injury again, a re a reoccurring eye injury. And I was asking the doctor today, I was like, is this something that's going to like my whole life, I'm going to have to deal with this. And she was like, ah, I mean, if you don't keep your eyes constantly like, like moist and you don't keep putting drops in your eyes, then yeah, this is something that's going to keep coming back. I'm like, well, fuck. So you're fucking, just going to be an eye drop person now, man. My friend deal Brandon, like, God damn it, dude. Why'd you have to stab me with a hat? It was unintentional. I meet this guy and shake his hand. It was unintentional, but fuck. It's like I'm I'm two years later, and it's causing me this shit again. Like, what the fuck, man? 
what the fuck? I did that whole interview with Cliff yesterday, and like my eye just looks stupid. Like I have like a red eye. And it was way more swollen than that like, it is right now. It was. I don't know. If you want to watch something funny and laugh, watch the fucking Cliff interview next Monday um, on on our video on our video version of it. But uh, just yeah. look at it this way: every year, or two years, it'll give you ten minutes of content. I would trade it. I would trade that. Honestly. Like, <laughs> not worth it. It's not worth it at all. <laughs> it is not worth it at all. It fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. Like it just felt like there was like sand kind of just stuck right here in my eye all day oh. yesterday. And it's like anytime you move your eye, it's like, ha ha, this isn't fun, is it? And today it's well, much you know, better, but I got medicine for it yesterday. You know what they say? Better you than me. <laughs> I guess for you, you're right. <laughs> so that is, uh, that's where I have been. And I guess that's, that's, that's the end of that segment. Huh? How about that? Um, <laughs> let's get into comeback kid. Before we do that, we'll tell you guys about our favorite beer ever in the entire world. I just opened up one of the brand new red bombshell blonde cans. Pat had just got some of that echo in Conroe. Fuck, the Echo is so good, too. Yeah, I almost got the Reds today, and then I saw the Echo staring at me, and I was like, man. Because I still have a couple uh, regular bombies in my fridge, but I was like, ah, I had bombies. I got a couple. I, actually, I think I'm out of strawberry. I should have. I didn't see those there, though. But I, I was like, I got bombies. I got Subatomico. Need that Echo. Uh, shout out to everybody, though, that is supporting Southern Star. I mean, like, in this time – of uh of like like everything's closed you know like like these bars and restaurants uh pat you know firsthand like you you're just having to work rely on to go orders only or curbside pickup and i mean southern star is awesome but like, like they're just they're a brewery you know and they have food trucks out there sometimes which is nice because you can get some food and your beer but uh right now they're just relying on beer to go and they're selling merch and stuff they have some dope ass southern star merch uh, I know uh, my girl Tessa went up there not too long ago, her and Country Club Earl, who you guys heard on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Um, they got some stuff, and I appreciate them doing that. I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, Tim Kostinick, I saw he was up there at Southern Star this weekend. He got some strawberry bombshell blonde. He sent us a picture of that. Um, but right now I got their, uh, their pickup times, Thursdays from noon to 6 p.m., Fridays from noon to 7 p.m., Saturdays noon to 7 p.m., and Sundays from noon to 6 Again, Thursdays, noon to 6, Fridays, noon to 7, Saturdays, noon to 7, and Sundays, noon to 6 p.m. Go support some local like a local business, right? You're, you're helping keep them in business. Tell them the gang from PTG told you to come out, and uh, they'll give you a high five. Be like, yo, he's like, where's Keith? Let me talk to Keith. And Keith will be like, oh, I got you. You're part of the gravy gang? Oh, come here, my friend. Come here, my friend. And I don't think he'll be able to dap you up because we can't touch each other right now. But he'll, like, maybe, like, virt like, from a distance, he'll give you a, di uh, a distance dab. We'll call it that. And uh, 3525 North Fraser Street up in Conroe. Get you some bombshell blondes, some strawberry bombies, the Subatomico IPA, the conspiracy theories, the Echo in Conroe. They got it all up there at Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world. And like, really, like, it doesn't matter what kind of beer you're into. They got it, and you're going to be pretty happy with it. I've never been disappointed with the Southern Star beer, and I don't think I ever will be because they always make the best stuff out there. You can get it at, your, at most liquor stores. You can get it at your grocery stores, too. But, you know, right now, why don't you go up to the brewery and support them and get some of the awesome uh, Bombshell 2020 shirts they have. They have some awesome hats. Um, Bombshell2020.com, it's – elections it's election year you know and you, it's more important than ever to go out there and exercise your right to vote on whether or not you want to vote for the blue can or the red can and i think i voted for the red can yesterday just because i've been drinking the red ones right now lately uh but like every time i open a blue one i'm like i don't know i like the blue too like i'm torn i'm torn it's new and fresh or iconic which one are I'm you going such for? an undecided voter so yeah. like, I don't know. I just, I'm a flip-flopper. I'm a flip-flopper. And I'm fine with that because Southern Star is absolutely delicious. Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world. If you're drinking a Southern Star, go get you some Southern Star. Tag us 
on Twitter at Pass the Gravy Pod. Tag them at Southern Star BC and uh, tag them on Instagram as well. Let them know you're supporting the people that support us because Southern Star has they've taken care of us. We've been a, we're a year in with Southern Star. I believe last week was our year anniversary of no way. of having Southern Star as our sponsor and you know they sponsor past the gravy bro that we're gonna have that bonus episode the crossover episode with cliff hog uh so has been good to us so let's be good to them right now like we we need to be supporting our local businesses and Southern star those guys up there are working their ass off let's uh let's 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 help keep the keep the lights on over at Southern Star. i don't think they're in danger of the lights going out but let's you know let's keep those lights on extra bright by supporting Southern star and i don't want to get anybody's hopes up too early i've heard some rumblings there might be the ability to deliver coming up in a bit. Ooh. It's something they're Ooh. thinking about, maybe working a little bit. So I'm all about keep an that. eye out for it. I'm all about that. Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world, the official beer sponsor of Pass the Gravy Podcast. Let's get into our Comeback Kids segment. You guys down with that? You guys down to clown with that? I'll give it a shot. It's the comeback kid. The comeback kid of the week. The comeback kid of the week. Bitch. All right. Um, we don't have too many comeback kids with like really the whole world kind of being shut down. There's there's not a ton of stuff, but um we found I found a couple, found a couple things we can talk about. And uh the first comeback kid this week is being stimulated. Because right, of porn? Right, ladies? You guys get it stimulating, stimulating that bean. No, um, no uh, it's stimulus checks. Obviously, that's what I'm talking about. Every, people are starting to get their stimulus checks. I didn't think I qualified for a stimulus check, honestly. And this morning, I checked my bank account, and I got a little $1,200 check, which was pretty uh, – I guess So did I. $1,200 direct deposit. Pretty sweet, huh? So here, here's what I don't get, though. I got mine as well today. In the past two days, my buddies have shown their direct deposits. One of them was nine seventy seven, and one of them was like six eighty something. So like, they got like taxed on theirs too. No, it depends. Like, it was supposed to be like if you, I think it was like if you make less than sixty or whatever, you got the twelve hundred. Then if you have kids, it's like plus you get so much money. Five hundred, five hundred each for uh, for kids. So I think like if you if you're making outside of whatever the I can't remember what the minimum was. It was like seventy five or sixty thousand dollars a year. They, I don't. Yeah, the maximum like was seventy five thousand. If you made more than that, then you'd be subtracted. Okay, so like that means your friends probably just make a lot of money, which is which is awesome on their part. But, like, like I, just, I, I didn't see. Make... I don't know. I know one of them's uh, like army ranger, so it's not like he's pulling in a shit ton of money. Oh, okay. I mean, like, no. I, I mean, I don't. I don't know a hundred percent like what the situation is. I just know like I didn't expect to get a to get the twelve hundred dollar check. Like, I like. You know, I didn't get – when Obama sent those out, I never got one of those. So, I was like, I'm probably not going to get one of these. All right, whatever. Well, weren't you and, in I mean, college then? I guess I was, yes. That didn't make sense. So, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, like, honestly, like, I don't want like, to sound like a dick or anything. Like, I, I feel like the money could have gone towards other people. Like, I, I, I am fortunate right now of, like, being able to work and all that stuff. So, it's like, I don't feel like I needed the 1200 as much as a lot of other people. But, like, I'm not going to not take it. <laughs> you know? yeah that, that's what my buddy said like uh who's the ranger he's like dude i don't i don't need this i don't know why i'm getting this shit uh i had another buddy who said he's actually gonna uh donate his when he gets it to his local gun shop and then you know maybe they'll just give him a sweet pistol or something that's pretty tight no you missed the joke he's just gonna go buy a pistol i know I know, I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Um, I didn't but, have, I don't have direct deposit set up, so I, I think I set that up today, so I haven't got mine yet yet. Well, I think you if, only get the direct not, deposit if you get your tax returns via direct deposit. Yeah. Because I think they're sending them the same way as your tax returns. So you're probably gonna get a check, but I did see that Donnie Trump's name is gonna be on your check now too. So if you cash that, that means you're supporting Donald Trump. If you think about it. Well, luckily, or I guess to avoid that, I did set up my direct deposit today. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the check's if, already if, in the mail. Yeah, then it may just be you may be getting the check, and then you have to you have to to cash Donnie's Donnie's name right there, buddy. I don't think you want to. I you want to keep that. That's a that's a collector's item, Robert. That's gonna be worth a lot of money. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, probably it's probably gonna be worth twelve hundred dollars. It'll probably or, or double. Maybe it, it it increases in value. It's like stamps. You get a, you get a couple thirty cent stamps, that, but it's like the Elvis sit. one, and they turn into like two hundred dollar stamps. Just sit on your $1,200 check for like 30 years 
and you can make like twelve fifty. Like it's gonna be <laughs> honestly. Hope, be worth it. Like if the world doesn't end, and like thirty years from now, you're like, this is what Donald Trump sent me in the mail. <laughs> like one, you can say like the president actually mailed you something, and people might believe it. I don't know. And then like I just feel like we're gonna look back at this and be like, remember when Donald Trump was fucking president? Like that was <laughs> wild. That was Man, wild. Those, like, do you those remember eight that? Those were fucking crazy. Four or eight, whatever, however many years it is. <laughs> however many years it is. I feel like Robert's face just sunk when I said that. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's like, like, I can see him staring at you through the computer, even though he can't really stare at you through the computer, and I, can't, I shouldn't be able to tell that. But, uh, yeah, so getting stimulated is bad because people are starting to do that. And then I, I don't think a lot of people realize that, like, no, you shouldn't just go buy dumb shit with it. Although I do kind of no. want to buy a tiger. I was telling somebody, I was like, what if I just flip the tiger? Like, you buy a tiger, I soup it up a little bit, and then I sell a tiger for more than I bought it. Well, you'd need an extra 1800 because they're going to be at least $3,000. Right, but, like, if I throw, like, another 500 bucks in it, get it a grill or whatever, then, like, you sell it for $3,000, and I made some money on the, I, I, you know, flip it like a house. Oh, speaking of which, I don't know if it just came out tonight. My sister said the new episode of Tiger King. I watched it. Up. Watched it already. Watched the TMZ feature. I'm pretty obsessed with that shit, so I've, I'm, I'm all of it's done. It Did was, it come uh, out today? Oh, it came out Sunday. Oh, fuck. I'm not going to tell you anything that happened, but it, it was nothing, like, crazy. It was nothing just really Jeff crazy. Just Jeff heavy? Um, like, it was just, they had Saf on it. They had most of the people besides Carol Baskin. Like, all the people that were interviewed on the show were pretty much in it again. And it was just, like, uh, Joel McHale is the host of it, and he's just doing it from, like, his That's living room. why he was trending. I couldn't figure it the fuck out. Yeah, he's, like, because he's, like, we're quarantined in a global pandemic, so let's talk to these people. And then, like... He talked to Robert Kirkham, like who like lives in Norway now, the producer guy from it, mm -hmm. and uh, he was he, it was it was interesting. Like a couple of things were interesting, and it was just kind of cool to see people's perspectives on it. Like, I enjoyed uh, the most probably was just like hearing like like they were talking about the fame that they've had from the show. Where it's like, dude, I can't go to like, and apparently they all just go to Walmart all the time because like every single one of them was like, yeah, I mean I'll be at Walmart and everybody's like, hey, it's time. Tiger King. It's you from Tiger King. And it's like they all used going to Walmart as an example. So it's like nothing against going to Walmart. Walmart's awesome. It's got good prices. But like they're always going to Walmart. It's because they all make 150 bucks a week. They can't afford to go anywhere else. I don't know what they get paid from Jeff Lowe or whatever. But and just Jeff Probably Lowe like, doesn't own anything that's not Oakley. Like it's crazy how much. Like that guy just wears like the same shit, but he has a million different outfits of the same exact like Harley jacket that he just – switches in and out of or whatever but uh i don't know i watched that and then tmz did a whole thing on it it was uh it started out okay but then fucking nancy grace's bitch ass had to fucking make her way on it and it was like <laughs> i mean he's abusing animals he's abusing animals he should be locked up he should be locked up he threatened to kill her and i was like of course the only person in the world that would sympathize with carol fucking baskin is nancy goddamn grace that fucking pug faced cunt that fucking bitch i fucking hate her I fucking hate her i was like you're ruining tiger king for me now nancy tiger king was awesome and then you fucking come along here why are you on my tv get off i hate here's it. what we need now we need casey anthony to go move to doc annals tiger ranch doc or whatever the fuck it's called yeah doc annals <laughs> move there and become one of his new wives and because he'll change your name mm -hmm. and casey will be like you can change your name but you can't change what you done you killed that little girl. Whatever, Rachel. <laughs> hey, what is Rachel? Hey, shut up, Rachel. <laughs> so, no, so um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that later today. I gotta. It's okay. Gotta just like up. don't go into it expecting it to be like. It's not like another full episode of the documentary. Oh no, no, like, no! Oh I my just, gosh, I need some more Tiger King. It's like until a, the inevitable uh, reunion show, uh, basically. Show starts because you know somebody's giving them a show. Oh yeah, they already they've already started casting. I think Kate McKinnon's gonna play Carol Baskin. No, no, no. I mean, like, reality show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, like, if it's not Exotic Joe, I really – I'm just not as interested. Joe Exotic. Exactly. Same fucking thing. Same fucking thing. I, I don't know why I got that mixed up. Um, so, yeah, I guess somehow that – I was talking about me using my stimulus check to flip a tiger. But, uh, yeah, being stimulated <laughs> in stimulus checks. That's a comeback, kid. And then I just added this one. Um, money giveaways. So, I hopped on this train this weekend. I don't know if y'all have seen uh, – I've seen a big uptick in this, which I always thought was a bunch of horse shit because you never see anybody that won the money talk about it. 
but it's like, all right, everybody, I'm going to be giving away $10,000 to one random person that we tweets and likes this tweet. And then in parentheses, he's like, must be following so I can DM you if you win. It's like, also, that's how you get like a thousand followers for just absolutely nothing. And then, mm-hmm. like, you never see anybody like, oh, wow, this guy gave away the money, and I did that. And they never announce who the winner is. It's like, I don't believe any of that shit. I think it's just, like, you're just clout chasing. So I was, like, I think it was Saturday morning. I was, like, I'm feeling a little frisky. I'm feeling a little frisky. Maybe I'll give away some money. And I was, like, I will give away between $1 and $1 million to one random person that likes and retweets this must must be, must be following so I can DM you. And then I was, like, also, this is a great way to gain followers for doing absolutely nothing. And I got like over 100 retweet, retweets on it. It was pretty awesome. And then halfway through How many day, new followers did you get? About like 20. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked just like, like exactly like I thought it would. It worked. And uh, then I, uh, but it was funny because like, there was one lady. She's like, I just want to let you know. Like she started. She, like, and it's funny because like when people would follow me and then immediately like message something. She was like, I just wanted to let you know if this is a hoax. That my people in the city of Houston will hunt you down. Us Texans don't stand for that. And I was like. Shut up, Becky. Like, fuck. You know who's you not going to win like, the money? Ma'am, you? you? No, you should have told her, ma'am, if you follow me right now, I guarantee you'll win the money. I was like, I live in fucking Texas. I know how the fucking shit works. Yeah. Right? Also, it's Twitter. I don't think anybody's going to get really upset about it. But it is funny because, like, some guy, it was like, uh, and I thought it was like, it was one of those, like, African prince kind of scam things. It was a Twitter. And he was like, this is my bank account. I'm very poor. You can transfer the money to this account. Like, yeah, okay, I'm not going to do that. And. <laughs> I was, so I was like, at the end of the day, I was like, I'm going to give away the prizes at 10. And I was like, actually, you know, I'm feeling frisky. I'm going to give away money to two random people. And then I gave away, uh, but then I was, I really only wanted to give away money to two people. Cause I was like, all right, I'm going to do what I don't ever see the other people that give away the money do. And I, at, at 10 o'clock, I was like, and so-and-so and so-and-so are our winners. DM me and I'll send you your money, but hurry because whoever DMs me first gets more money. And so it was Dylan Williams. I believe he's a listener of Pass the Gravy. I just randomly, I didn't pick him because of this in the past year. I randomly scrolled, picked two people, and Dylan was one of them. And Dylan got $6.90. So $6.90. He got the grand prize. And then I think Marlene was the other girl that won, and she got $4.20. Nice. So I did not lie. I said it was between $1 and $1 million. So that did fall right in between that sweet spot. People really. I think I was- you you could have just straight up said between one and ten dollars, and you still would have gotten people like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, I could use an extra fiber. Well, it's funny because like, it better be the thousand. It better be at least a thousand. I was like, yeah, okay, because I look like I can just hand out a thousand dollars. Like, I don't know who you think <laughs> I fucking am, <laughs> but like, uh-uh. no, I'm not just giving away a thousand dollars. I can't afford that shit. Even though I was just like, oh, I, I, I didn't really need the stimulus. Like, what if I was? Just, I'm giving away my stimulus check. I'm not going to do that. That's a terrible idea. Yeah. This do is, don't even... but it was just like, I don't know. It was entertaining just to see how many people were retweeting it. And it was like, that is a hundred percent. Like how people just clout chase. So like I've seen it. I felt like I had seen like 10 in the last, like the two days prior to that. And I was like, all right, I want to just see if it works. And it did. So if you guys want to try that little life hack, you'll get a lot yeah, of I'm gonna get it on this. retweets. I'm going to be like, I will give out between one and 10 dick pics. But you must be following me so I can. I don't know if that's going to work as well. <laughs> hey, I'm going after a different segment of Twitter than you are. Okay. 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 <laughs> I get you. I get you. So because uh, yeah. I think that I, I think the people that I'll attract with that can really help me when it comes time for mock drafts. Oh, okay. You're just trying to buy your way. <laughs> if I can buy anything with my dick, I'm very happy with it. Okay. That is true. That is true. Uh, so yeah, money giveaways were an, I just a comeback kid that I just thought of right then. And then uh, another comeback kid. This is a big comeback kid, honestly. Um, white running backs. White running backs making a huge, huge week for white running backs. Uh, and finally, white guys catching a break on something. Christian McCaffrey became the highest paid running back in the NFL. I think he's getting about $16, 16 million mil per a year. year. And uh, I think Zeke Elliott had $15 million a year is what he was getting. He was the highest paid. Chris McCaffrey is like two years away from finishing his contract. So he just got an extension. But it's like, that's crazy. They locked him up that early on. Like, he's, he's not really a running back as much as he is. Just he does everything. He's a utility guy. Like he, I mean, he still receiver. gets a shit ton of rushing yards, too. He does get a lot of rushing yards. But he, like, lines up in the slot and shit. Like, he gets a lot of receptions. I mean, w- he does w- it all. Would you – 
would you have said that Marshall Falk wasn't really a running back? No, no, I would not. So now you're just no, you're going, I just, hey, I, good day for the white guy. Also doesn't count because he's a white no, guy. No, I don't. I'm not saying he's not a running back because he does get a lot of rushing yards. But it's like you just like Christian McCaffrey is like he does it all. He's just he's he could play like half the positions on the field. I feel like you know. Just it's like when uh, when Denard Robinson came in the league and they didn't know what to label him as, so they just called him a offensive weapon, athlete. <laughs> <laughs> or who was the guy out of a uh, fucking Ole Miss like 10 years ago? He had like, long dreads and they couldn't figure out what to call him. So they literally just labeled him as an offensive weapon on their death chart. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. Like, like, but I remember Denard Robinson for sure, where they're like, ah, I mean, he's so, like when, at Michigan when they started him. And it was like in college, that was totally different where he could play whatever. But like, like we're going to keep Well, him he was quarterback, a quarterback just he, straight up. He can't throw, though. He couldn't really yeah, throw. Yeah, he couldn't, so he like, couldn't throw also, the ball 35 only, yards. He's only going to run or throw 10-yard passes. So, pretty much get used to that. Still and then somehow he, like, beat Notre Dame. He never tied his shoes, so they called him shoelace. And, like, yep. never tripped on his shoelaces either, which was nuts. But uh, he would just, like, take off. He was my favorite college player for a long time. I fucking hated him. But he was awesome. Well, because he like, played against you, Notre Dame. But you like you Every knew year. what he was gonna do. Like, all right, he's gonna back up and then he's gonna take off running. Shit, he did it again and he beat us. How did he get fifty yards again? <laughs> like, and it was over and over and over again. I think he played receiver for the Jags for a little bit. But running back. He did okay. Uh, he was he was he offensive was, weapon. He but he was everything. again like he, they were like, ah, can you play corner? Fuck, we'll just throw you out there. Who knows? You're fast. And uh, he he was all right. And then he just never never ended up as anything. Uh, who was who was the running back? Uh, Dexter McClellan, I believe, was the name. Dexter McCluster. That's who McCluster. I was talking about. Dexter the McCluster, former, uh, uh, Ole Miss guy. Yeah. Well, he was such a fucking athlete, but like he just never fit a hundred percent. Well, he was the position. original offensive weapon. They just didn't know what the fuck to do with him. But they're like, dude, we're gonna throw you out there, fly sweeps, running back a little bit, bubble screens. We're just just get the ball in his hands. We don't know how to do it but we're right. gonna try and do it and then you figure out what happens after that but yeah christian mccaffrey man like getting that money he's getting that paycheck and he's like uh and which is funny because like a lot of people say don't pay running backs and like a lot of times you pay a running back that's like 28 and you're like well he's peaked at his career so you just paid this guy for he's gonna only decline and then they, they usually get cut three years later or whatever it is todd Gurley. i guess yeah exactly but, this, but this but this guy's white so you had to pay him <laughs> you know <laughs> What are you oh, trying to say, He's Robert? making more money because he's white? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can't deny that, I guess, right now, because he did get paid more than everybody else. Is the NFL racist? Hmm. Well, they've got a, a, a newish white owner, a new white head coach. Hmm. Are the Panthers problematic? And they're from Carolina. Yeah. <sighs> Not great. Not great when you add all those up. <laughs> the optics aren't phenomenal. Really aren't. They really aren't. But uh, you know, it's just good to see the white guys finally win one, right? Yeah. After they've been held after back after for all far of this too long stuff. in the NFL. It's about yeah. time. Uh, I'm about just time. Kidding, but still, it was. Uh, but you know, they are they are getting him. What he's 24 now. So I don't. How long was the extension? Uh, I think probably four years. until it's four years. So yeah, and he's got two years. So it's basically six years he's got left with them. Yeah, which will carry him to 30. Really, all the payments are going to be by the time he's like 27, 28. So they're get, they're paying him for the good years, and then they'll find a way to cut him at the tail end. But they are running – like, he's getting run into the ground. They've – like, just the amount of usage he's had so far, it's like well, – that's not going to be able last, to hold up. Like, we saw the, Todd Gurley, perfect example again. Like, you can't just use him that often and then uh, just, just – uh, LaShawn McCoy is another perfect example. Like, we're just going to run you until you can't run anymore, and then we're just going to kind of let you – we're put you at the pasture. But, I mean, really, last year was all because Cam went down, and they had nothing – like, Kyle Allen was their fucking quarterback. What are you talking about? Kyle Allen was, like, a great recruit in college and played for U of H, so he was awesome. Yeah. I'm just kidding. But, hey, now they've got Teddy Bridgewater, and more importantly, they've got P.J. Walker. I was about to say, P.J. Walker is really who we care about. As So, now, we'll now to it's not, not going to have to be all Christian. It's not going to have to be all Christian. Dude, I hope P.J. gets to do some trick plays, at least, if he doesn't start. Like, just let him line up in receiver and, like, do the old, uh, the old wide receiver screen pass, pass. The double pass? Yeah. Why the fuck not? I mean, and Matt Rule was his college coach. Right. I don't know. I would love it if PJ beat out Teddy Bridgewater. I just don't see it happening. But I don't either because I Bridgewater I, I goes down. Really like Bridgewater, I think he's a really good quarterback. If Bridgewater goes down, uh, I think they're, they're in good they're hands. In a good spot for sure. 
Um, I mean, as of this second right now, he's the best backup in all of football. You can't deny it. I mean, besides Colt McCoy, obviously. No. With the Giants. Colt the Bolt McCoy. Didn't but, even know he was on the Giants. We, saw, yeah, we got the greatest backup ever. No. I mean, I don't know. Actually, technically, the greatest backup ever would be uh, – uh, Chase Daniel. <sighs> He's probably made no. the most money as a backup. No, I was going to say, what's his name for the Giants? Who won you that Super Bowl? Jeff Hostetler. There you go. Yeah, because he can't won a Super Bowl. Down. Or actually, or Nick, Nick Foles. Foles. But, but Nick, Nick Foles, Foles though, has had so much playoffs. shit in his career. Only for the playoffs, Nick Foles. Or no, what's his name? Uh, Case Keenum. Fucking Case. Backup quarterback. As a backup quarterback, okay. Okay, I can yeah. hear that. And then he was just electric with the Vikings. I don't know. What about he Gardner? Was- hmm? No, no, no. I mean, he, Garner he, came he, out. He's not a backup. I mean, he was. He was a ro- he was a rookie. I would argue the best but backup quarterback of all time is Tom Brady. <laughs> no, he <laughs> ever was just ever a heard of him? He was a backup. Came in. Aaron and now, Rodgers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers was a backup for four years. I didn't realize that until I was listening to something today, and they were talking about. It. I was like, I thought it was three years. I did not realize it was a fucking like. No, it was four. Did he come out of college early too? Uh that I'm not sure about. But I guess it wouldn't have mattered because he could have gotten drafted anyway. Like, that's fucking nuts, though. That's fucking yeah. nuts that, like, one, he wasn't the first overall pick that Alex Smith was. But then, like, Alex Smith, like, made it up on the other end of it. We were like, shit, I know he had a pretty productive career until he, like, lost his leg almost. Yeah, I mean, they just had shitty management and uh, coaches in San Francisco for a while there. But He had, like, 19 yeah, that, coaches, I feel like. That's just what was so crazy about the whole thing was we had Brett Favre. We knew Brett Favre wasn't going anywhere for a while. But they saw Aaron Rodgers drop to 24th, and they're like, how the fuck do we not pick this guy? And then, like, like but then, then he just also, 23 teams in the NFL that were just fucking stupid. But Rodgers also seemed like, like, I, I personally was like, he's probably going to be good, but he's never going to be like, he'll probably be like average at best, just because he's like, if he's been sitting this long, like, he's got to have something where you'd be like, all right, Brett, get the fuck out. We're going to go with Aaron. And then finally, like when Brett, the 90th time he tried to retire and come back, they're like, no, dude, we already got a guy here. All right. We've already put him in. We've installed the offense. No, Brett. No, we're going to trade you the fucking jets. Just leave us alone. All right. We get it. You've done this. <laughs> the, you've done this the last nine years. Knock it off. And <laughs> quit, quit making Rachel Nichols have to fly down to fucking Mississippi every off season and be like, we're outside of Brett's fucking ranch. Is he coming back or is he not? I don't know. South and Alabama, kill Mississippi. Like, yeah. But, uh, like, then Aaron Rodgers comes in there. And I was like, he's probably going to be good, but, like, I just don't see him being, like, a stud or else, like, Brett wouldn't have been there for so long. Yeah, also, I mean, it, if you watch, like, some of his college tape and then even just from, like, his first-year practice tape, they reworked his throwing motion. Like, it yeah, was a did. lot longer, and he just – he worked. He became uh, the most talented quarterback of all time. And Brett Favre is a really good quarterback, but I don't necessarily think he's the best quarterback to learn under because he's fucking just – he's a gambler. He oh no no well, no! Brett Brett also didn't teach him shit. Brett yeah, straight up said, "It's not my job to teach this kid." Yeah, Brett, and I was Brett fine Favre with that. Like, like you're Brett dick. Favre. You're allowed to do it. Yeah, he kind of is. But you know who's more of a dick is Aaron Rodgers. That guy's an asshole. Yeah, he but that's why family. I love him. He hates his own family. Yeah, well, you know what? He was dating a hot chick, and she, fu- you know, the puss he's, got to him. He's dating Danica Patrick. No, I'm talking about before Olivia Munn, that fucking Yoko Ono. Whoa, whoa. Olivia Munn is – oh, my God, Olivia Munn's awesome. Uh, I thought so, too, until she ruined Aaron Rodgers' relationship with his family. It all centered around her. They didn't like her, and she told Aaron, stop fucking with your family, and he did. I mean, I kind of get it. No, uh, so do I. I mean, she – I'd probably listen to most of the things that Olivia Munn told me to do. Yes, she's ma'am. A yes, ma'am. dirty I, girl. I would be uh, Howard – uh, to Carol Baskin for her. Oh yeah, I'd simp she like could, a motherfucker. Yeah, she could put me in a leash, and I'd wear the little fucking Fred Flintstone outfit. Oh, God, that woman's a work of art, but she's a <laughs> bitch. Um, so yeah, I guess that was from white running backs. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're going six hours today. We're uh, we're gonna stick to football though here, and um, another comeback kid this week: the Dallas Cowboys being terrible. Now, we're not talking record-wise or anything because obviously it's the offseason, but I don't know if you guys saw they were actively trying to spread coronavirus over the weekend. By ele- It looked like Dak had hosted a birthday party for about 30 people. Turns out it was about 10. And he was like, oh, it was just a dinner party. It was less than 10. Which probably means nine then. So for nine people, which is still too much to gather at once. I think it's supposed to be gatherings of three or four at this point. 
And yeah, like uh, Brett Brandon, our buddy at Price of a ZJ on Twitter. He like I I, I was like I've just been trolling Dallas fans, and it's like, dude, they're not a good look. And like I'm in control of the Rod Ryan Show sports blog, so like I was like, my headline on Monday, I believe, was the Dallas Cowboys are actively trying to spread coronavirus, and everybody just hopped on that headline like, what the hell? Like what the what the hell is that? I mean, you tell me that a gathering of thirty people isn't trying to spread coronavirus when you're not supposed to. And they're like, well, he's not, they're not doing that. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make the headline and people are going to click it. All right. That's what's going to happen. And then today Dak had like said all the, well, it was only like nine people or whatever. And I was like, not a good look. Dak Prescott defends Cowboys coronavirus party. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, so, that's the best part is calling it a coronavirus party. Right. But you can like chirp, like Cowboys fans will, like chirp back. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I'm going to tend to believe anybody but the Cowboys because I'm biased. So I'm going to say he's a liar. And yeah. <laughs> he's, judging he's, by Dak's he's passing, overpaid, he's not the best judge of character. He's an overpaid, unsocially conscious asshole. And he, yeah, he wants to kill people, really. He's, he's no, a domestic, don't look. He's it was a domestic less terrorist. less than 10. Like, why would you even care? It's less than 10. Stop fucking having people over, Dak. You're a fucking, like, this is what I've said for years. He sucks. He's, he makes bad decisions. Hence why he throws fucking interceptions, but that's also due to his accuracy because he sucks. I've been trying to tell all my Cowboys fans or friends that are, uh, or all my friends that are Cowboys fans, the best thing that can happen to you this year is Dak just sucks dick and cannot pick up Mike McCarthy's offense. I would love that. Like I would, I would love that if then they. No, no, I would love for him to have a sick year and him get a big contract and then suck. But the best thing for the Cowboys, no, no, I mean they won't win. I hope not going to win. I would love if like Mike McCarthy's optimism that they have for like Mike McCarthy coming in, turning it around, they just crater and they become even worse than they already were. And it's like, would I I hope that we have people wishing that Jason Garrett was the head coach of the Cowboys again by midseason? I would love that. I would absolutely fucking love that i don't think it's going to be the case unfortunately but i would love if like mid-season like fuck can we have jason garrett back at least like we knew what he was going to do mike mccarthy what the fuck man no that won't happen but what will happen is by mid-season they're gonna be wishing cooper rush is starting at quarterback for them because Dak sucks because he can't pick up the fucking offense cooper rush is not a quarterback name it's not a quarterback name at all we've talked about (laughs) quarterback names that's a running back name or a pass rusher name you know, you're not a quarterback if you're Cooper Rush. What the fuck, dude? But, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't think you can be named Cooper and be. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say be anything other than a quarterback, but then I immediately remember. You'd be a Cooper receiver. Cup. Or yeah, a, Cooper yeah. Cup. Cooper Manning as well. Eh. He was eh. a receiver. He was a receiver. Eh. Cooper Trooper. Cooper Troopa. Koopa Trooper. I know. I'm trying to just think of other Coopers. Um. <laughs> But, yeah, just uh, it's a bad look at, at, at all to just, like, first off, like, the Cowboys a couple weeks ago, they were like, well, they're just working out together right now. It's like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Socially distant. Be socially fucking distant, all right? If you, if you have roommates, you don't have to be socially distant from them. But you can't just have fucking people over all the time. That's why we're not doing the podcast together right now. That's why we're doing it remotely because we're not trying to fucking spread coronavirus because we're not dicks. Dak <laughs> Prescott, he's a dick. He doesn't care. He's a domestic terrorist. You heard, like, it yeah. you heard it here first. He doesn't yeah. care about people. He's just he, – he's a fucking idiot. Dak Prescott, think about this, Cowboys fans. He's trying to kill your nana. He's trying to kill, you know, he's trying to kill your elderly family members. That's what he's – he doesn't care about their well-being. He doesn't care at all. Well, maybe he's trying to kill Jerry Jones, and there's a lot of Cowboys fans that will get behind that. No, we protect Jerry at all costs. I'm big I'm Jerry Jones Jerry. guy. I love big Jerry. Jerry Jones guy. Saying, I hope he lives I know forever. a lot of Cowboys fans that want Jerry Jones to finally just die. And I, I want the exact opposite. I hope he has that, that life serum and just lives forever. I hope he's 103 years old and still won't give up power over the Cowboys. How great would that be? I hope, like, my children's children are still dealing with Jerry Jones for some reason. And he, like, <laughs> like he's, like, half robot because then by, like, at that point, you can just have, like, a robot body. And he's, like, I will draft this guy again. <laughs> It's just him and Robert Kraft getting tub, tub jobs together every Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> He's just jerking off into shoes still. Uh, so, yeah, the Cowboys being terrible, but now they're terrible people instead of just a terrible team. Um, that's a comeback kid and my least favorite comeback kid maybe ever. Uh, the XFL not working out again. 
for the no. First see here, I'm I'm optimistic though. I'm not. As a, part owner, for... as a part owner of the team, of a team, of the best team ever in Houston sports history, I don't think it's coming back, man. It's dead for now. No, they filed Chapter 7, not Chapter 11 bankruptcy. No, they filed Chapter 11. Or, yeah, I was going to say, or it's the other way around. I forget which one. But that means they might refile it. Like, because it was working. It was I, working. I'm no uh, economist or whatever it's called to know about how to work Chapter 11 or anything or financial guy, but I think the Chapter 11 is just so they don't have to pay out all the credit or all the money that they owed. Because mm-hmm. I know that they owned money to fucking like U of H, they owed like 300 grand. They owed millions of dollars to like the St. Louis Sports Association or whatever it was, the people in charge of the St. Louis dome that they had. Um, like uh, Bob Stoops was like a huge investor. He was like the third biggest investor in the XFL. So fuck what? him. Fuck him and the Dallas Renegades. Um, <laughs> fuck that guy. But he's like owed money too. June Jones was owed some money. Like, so I think that's their way of like not having to pay the full amount of debt that they owed them. Yeah. That's but, what bankruptcy does. Right. But I don't think that that means they're coming back. I think that's just to help them financially. No, it's go- It's going to be like I, the earliest it might happen, I would say would probably be 2023 maybe 2022 but the way they so filed far. i know but you know what i think they're gonna come back because it was working and people liked it it wasn't like the aaf it was well put together like they didn't try and rush it like the aaf did like they took their time setting everything up i think it's gonna be back now it's gonna be a couple years it's gonna be a while but they proved that their product was good enough and that it works and I proved so it, that I'm actually a pretty good owner, a part owner of a team, you know? Who would have thought? That you are, y- sir. Your boy, Alex, part owning a team. And, like, I, I, I mean, who else is the greatest? Like, who else would you say is the greatest owner in Houston sports history? Like, I think I'm up there. I'm in the discussion. I might not be, like, what people's first answer is, but you're like, hey, remember Alex Middleton? He uh, owned the Roughnecks. They never lost a game. I'm, pr- I'm, not, a, I'm not a scientist but, uh, or a mathematician, but uh, what is 100% – of uh that's pretty good at winning right like a hundred percent winning percentage i don't know is jim crane's winning percentage 100 because mine is no but he, but he helped bring us a ship i just wish he would have uh, i think stuck i with brought us guys. a ship too in only five games by default i mean like I can't we had a two that. game lead on everybody else in the league at least and then the season got canceled i'm i'm pretty sure we're the champs pretty sure we're the champs we are the so champs. you're welcome houston for bringing the first championship his- in history for football to this city and i mean i don't want all the credit but i like a little bit I like a little bit of the credit i'll give you a little bit just, uh, just a- yeah. i mean just it was it was a rush owning a team for the first time part owning a team for the first time although vince mcmahon owning the majority of it it's nice that i didn't have to foot the bill for all of the money that he had to pay uh, i mean I, I know the feeling as a packers owner i know the rush mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but your winning percentage is just nowhere near mine which is like it just dwarfs. longer periods of time. Man. It just dwarfs you though, bro. Like five for five, every game, every game. And like, fuck those games are so much fun to go to. And like my phone, I still have the schedule. Like I typed it all up into my phone and like, it'll be like, Oh, reminder, like traffic is light to TD ECU stadium. I'm like, fuck. Who are you playing the defenders this week? Like, God damn it. This like, I, I'm, I'm like all mad that like we could, I could be at a game. I could be at a game. We could be grilling with my pals. I could be just getting hammered and yelling shit. You should have been harder on me on getting me to the games, man, because I was going to go, but I kept putting it off. You never go to anything. That's why I said you should have been harder on me. This it is wouldn't on matter. You. I've yes, been trying to get you to go to a West Ham game for like a million years, life. and you're like, eh, no. Nobody pushes me in life, and that's why I don't ever we fucking do. do anything. The harder you get, the harder somebody pushes you to do something, <laughs> the more stubborn you get about not doing it. No. That's no, how you work, was, Pat. No, when I was pushed in life as a young kid, I was really good at baseball. As soon as people stopped pushing me, I got to 330 pounds. <laughs> so it's everybody else's fault. That's what it is. Of course. Of course. You're not responsible at all for this. No. I'm a privileged okay, white it. man in America. Why would I be responsible for anything I do? <laughs> at least he's honest. At least he's honest. But, yeah, I don't think you would have gone to a game regardless. You wouldn't have gone to a game regardless. No, 100% I was going to, though. Because I'll yeah. tell you straight up if I'm not going to go. Uh-huh. 
I was going to go. Same thing with the fucking, like, I was, I already had the date set out for when I was going to meet you guys at Nick's place for the no, fucking, uh, no, you yes. Didn't. You're a fucking liar. It was two weeks after they fucking shut everything down. I was like, this is the game I'm going to go to. Yeah, he scheduled Nick's it the week they shut it the down. He's like, I'm going that one. <laughs> no, no, for the hammers. I had it planned out. It was two weeks after. I was like, I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to take that Friday, not get shit faced on that Friday. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to meet Alex at that one. And then everything got shut down. Lies. Because if lies, you give lies. me time to push everything off, I'll pick the latest date I can because I'm a procrastinator. I've been that way my whole life. I, no. Every paper I ever wrote was the night before it was due. Well, that's what you call being a goddamn student, buddy. No, I mean, I turned it into an art form, man. I but was... did you ever, like, know people that were like, they'd be like, all right, well, this paper is due in two weeks. And then, like, you'd have people that are like, oh, I'm done with my book. Like, what are you doing, nerd? Like, you just typed it up day two. <laughs> like, what are you – what? 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 What if new information comes out? Why? <laughs> Why did you type? Like, what? Were you just bored? So you typed up a paper? Like, no, I'm going to freak out and get mad at myself that I waited until the last second and I'm not going to sleep the night before it's due. That's how just, it works. Just build your anxiety, raise your heart rate until like last minute. You're like, this is due in three and a half hours. I used to like, sometimes I'm I would fucked. just go buy, I'd buy a thing of cigarettes and like, like one of my roommates would smoke sometimes and I would just go buy a thing of cigarettes and I would just go like, and like sort of like chain smoke because I was like all stressed that I was having to fucking type these papers. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to type. And I'm going to go outside. I'm going to smoke a cigarette. I'm going to come back. I'm going to type. I get through it though. See, that's where you fucked up. You should have just spent full Hunter S. Thompson and been sitting there with the cigarette, just smoking and typing along the same way. <laughs> Maybe take some mescaline too. I don't know if that would have worked. I mean, it worked for Hunter I S. Thompson. May not right, but I don't think he was writing course papers. I think he was writing <laughs> books. He was writing stories about how he's fucked up on mescaline right like not like we're like hey let's discuss the war of 1812 and cite 12 sources and let us see it in the bibliography i would be like all right so anyways let me tell you about the color yellow <laughs> you ever uh you ever procrastinate so hard that finally gets to the point where you just go fuck it i'm turning it in late uh no no i was uh, my one that was my one bugaboo i, I was never uh i was never a, like there were One times I forgot that, and I did have to turn it in late, but I never intentionally was like, I'm fucking just turning it in late. There was a uh, thing in one of my criminal justice classes where you had to do your own personal history report, which is basically like the packet of like, you know, what everything you've ever done, like that you would turn in before you go uh, to a police academy. And I procrastinated on it so hard because like you had to come up with references and all this shit and get people's information. I turned it in the day the guy was giving it back to everyone. <laughs> So, like, I put it on his desk, and we passed What'd it out. What'd you get goes, on like, it? Oh, like a fucking, like, 58 or a 60. So worth it, obviously. Yeah, and here's the worst part about it is it didn't have to be accurate. You just kind of had to fill it out so, like, you knew what you were doing. But I forgot about that, which is why <laughs> I turned it in it late. Up. But, like, when he was passing it all out, he goes, Pat, Dion, he goes, I don't have a thing on this. I go, no, 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 I'm turning that in right now. And he looks at me and goes, really? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever try, like, My if bad. you hadn't turned something in, you're like, no, I gave it to you. And then like seventh grade. Yeah, like I remember in high school I did that once and the teacher like went through all of her other classes. I I can't for the life of me find this Alex. Like, I swear I turned it in. I know I turned it in. I was up all night the night before. And I was like, if I just push it on her, then she's gonna think it's her fault. And she was like apologetic because she couldn't find it. And I think she just gave me like a pity like B or a C for just like if she didn't have it. I got like a C and I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I just lied. So, I lied my ass off. And I remember like, this is either going to be a zero or like, I can just lie. And like, what's the worst <laughs> that's going to happen? It's still going to be a zero <laughs> right now. It's nothing. I don't know. And I was like, cause I had, like, I was pretty good about like turning shit in. It wasn't always great grades, but I was like, I turned it in and I totally just forgot whatever the assignment I was like, no, no, I did turn it in. Remember? Remember? And she was like, I, I do think I recall you turning it in. And I was like, yep, 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 yep. Keep going with that. Push that even further. Yeah, I totally told you. What the hell did you do with my paper? It's not my fault that you suck at keeping papers. My, my seventh grade math class, it was uh, some sort of project where it was on a big piece of poster board. So, like, not the kind of thing that disappears. <laughs> and uh, It's like an anvil. She, it's like she's waiting. grading it all, and she goes, Pat, where's yours? You never turned it in. I go, Yes, I did. Because we just put them all in a pile at the front. She's like, it's not here. I was like, oh, I turned it in. Like, she called in my mom to the school and everything. And I was just like, no, mom. Like, I just worked on it upstairs, which is like, it was the dumbest thing ever. Because, like, my mom used to always help me with, like, projects and stuff, too, and make sure I was doing them. And I was like, no, I just never told you about it. And I just did it upstairs by <laughs> myself. 
and then I brought it to school that day and turned it in. And like, so like, it was so, it was the most ridiculous lie. Like it was so see-through. And she, finally she's like, well, you can turn it in like again for a, a 60 is the highest I'll give you. And I got a 60 because I was really good at math. I just decided not to do this one project for whatever fucking reason. It was the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> Robert, did you ever did you ever have anything like that you did in school? Of course you did. No. No. I have nothing you like you were the guy that, like day one finished the project. I would have finished it day one, but I, I I wouldn't do what Pat did and just lie or what you did, just lie. I turned it in when I did it. That was the only time I did it. And that was like one of those where it was like I think it was like I don't remember what I, I wanna say I was like a junior or a senior, but probably a senior if I was just like at that point of like fuck it, you know? Where I was like, ah, all right, like, what's the word? Like, I'm either going to fail this or not. <laughs> <laughs> Especially senior year, because you're like, no college is looking at these grades anymore. But I just remember being like, oh, no college wanted to look at my grades in the first place. But uh, This is why you went to Sam Houston. Whoa, whoa. Trash. It's the Harvard of Southwest Texas. Everybody says that. Is it? I call it that. Some people say <laughs> that. Maybe it's just me, but some people say that. <laughs> I think it's just you. Uh, maybe, other no, might, I uh, other people I, I'm might. just joking. I actually, I, I really did like South. Or <laughs> it's got a better criminal justice school than Texas State. I'll tell you that much. That's Texas true. But Texas justice. State had more bikinis per capita. It is true. It is true. Texas State has more horse. If that's what you're into. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that was the XFL. I guess we were talking about. <laughs> See oh, how we man. get off topic here a lot? Uh, I guess we do. Um, let's move on to a, our next segment. Let's go WWJD style. Um, and if you guys uh, – so, like, we're running a little low on this, guys. I told you we're going to do WWJD because it's problematic to some people. I don't think it's been as problematic. Like, it's over the last couple months, like, the the hate for it has leveled out a little bit or with those people have just quit listening altogether. I can't tell which. But um, – if if you throw you throw Jesus into a modern day situation, we'll tell you what it'll do. You just say, "Hey, what would Jesus do in this situation?" Hashtag PTG WWJD to at Pass the Great Pod. I'm at Alex J Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dion. Robert is at Robert Barbosa zero three on Twitter. Hashtag PTG WWJD. We're gonna do this until we don't have any more submissions. We do have a submission today. Let's get into this week's WWJD. Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Put him in a situation in a matter of time. If you wrote the stream, do you think he'd make it rhyme? So think about this crazy world in which we live today. And how would Jesus handle it in any given way? All right, I will read it in my Casey Kasem voice. So this week's WWJD comes from our good friend, Stephanie E. Babau. Day Babau. There we go. Stephanie said, or it's at Stephanie on Twitter. That's Stephanie, Stephanie with five E's before the Z-Y. Stephanie says, what character would Jesus play with on Super Smash Bros? Which map would he choose to brawl on? That's actually a really I, good question, honestly. I, um, um, I, I, I think he'd go with Captain Falcon. I don't know why. I just, like, he's not going to pick Kirby. Kirby's just a little too easy. Because I'm going off the Super Smash 64. I'm going off the original. The OG, yeah. The OG. Because that's all I know, because I haven't played any other ones. I, I would go Kirby, because, you know, it was just Easter, and, you know, he, he rose, and, and oh. Kirby just keep, keep on rising. <laughs> I'm going to go Kirby. Okay. Okay. I mean, not a bad – not a bad – okay, I'm, so I'm looking at – all right, you got Luigi, Mario, Don- Donkey Kong, Link, Samus, Captain Falcon, Jigglypuff, Pikachu, Fox, Kirby, Yoshi, and Ness were the OG guys. I feel like you could play with. So maybe he's Ness. He's Ness. I was thinking Ness possibly too. Uh, just because Ness was that weird character where you had to be really skilled to use him, though. But if you were, he was very powerful. What did you guys play with? I was always Samus, even though I had no. Was it Met- Metroid Prime? Was it Samus? Yeah. Was from? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was always uh, Samus just because I like the like little rope you could hit, you could like whip people with, or you could just shoot the ball at them. Yeah, I was Kirby because I was bad. But if I didn't go Kirby, I would go Captain Falcon just because if I could time it right and hit you with that Falcon punch, it's so satisfying. The Captain Falcon is probably like the best guy in the game, I would say. No, uh, if, you if could known, it out. no, if known how to use properly, Pikachu. 
Pikachu was a monster. So that was what I was going to – honestly, I feel like – because we always talk about, like, God shooting people down with lightning bolts. Like, I feel like he's – like, Jesus is the son of God. So, like, that power that Pikachu has where he can just strike you with lightning, like, Jesus would have that one. Yeah. I mean, if you knew how to use uh, Samus, too, Samus was really powerful because, like, a lot of people would use Kirby and then use that drop brick thing on you. Samus, mm. if you could time it right, could up punch you and fuck your shit right up. Yep, that was one of my specialties, honestly. But uh, like, I, I, I think, I think Jesus would be Pikachu if we had to go Super Smash Bros. style. Like, yeah, I think he's gonna be Pikachu. And then if we're talking about which like map he's going on, hear me out. I think he's gonna go Star Fox map. Yeah, like where you're on the on 100%. the the cruiser out there because you're closer yeah. to heaven. You're, you're up in the air, you know. So like he's closer to his dad. He's like, Dad, check it out. I'm fucking people up on uh, Super Smash Bros. Because like he's not gonna kill people in real life, but in Super Smash Bros. Like JC's still down to party and fuck people up. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it, it's definitely gonna be that one. The only one you could say maybe after that would be Zelda's Castle. That was really good too, mm-hmm. or even possibly the uh, Pokemon Towers. But it's it's Zelda's. Zelda's was where you settled I think all these. Star beasts. Fox, dude. I think it's the Star Fox. Or sorry, sorry, Star Fox. Star Fox. Yeah, the Star I, Fox is, I, I, and then I, Jesus, I'm looking at Jesus the picture now Link. in the Star Maybe Fox Jesus one. Link. Yeah, Star Fox one, there's a Z in the background in space, so I keep thinking Zelda. Uh-huh. But it's, uh, yeah, Star Fox level is where you settled all beefs. That's 100% where it would be. So, Robert, what do you think he's going to go with again? Uh, I think I'm going to go with Pikachu. I agree with that. I, yeah, you convinced me on Pikachu. I think that's the one. This is actually a really good uh, – this is one of my favorite WWJDs I think we've ever done. And it was like, I was kind of like, I don't know. I, I hope that, they, like, I know we all like grew up in the Super Smash Bros. Like age group. But mm-hmm. I didn't know, like, I was like, I don't know. Like, is Robert going to go only new school characters and shit like that? Like, who are the new people like on the, on the newer ones? Do you know? Oh, you got like Mewtwo and all these other Pokemon. And then it's like cheating to me. Games that I've never even played. They've got people in there. Who fucking knows? When I was growing up, man, that was like, there were summers where it was like, that was all I did. I think like, I'm, when we're done here, I think I'm going to go pull out my old big ass block TV that I can hook <laughs> into, hook up my N64 and play some Smash Brothers. It's, it was a fun game, dude. One of my favorite games to ever play, like growing up. So. Like fuck yeah, Super Smash Bros. Super, we should we should we could do like a mock draft of Super Smash Bros. characters. I feel like, but we got a better mock draft for that coming up. But I think uh, yeah, Jesus would go Pikachu, and I think Star Fox would be the map that he would go with. Mm-hmm. Thank Good you, Dave Babau. Dave Babau. She always comes through clutch. She always comes through clutch. I believe that's always why she brings was, the heat. That's why she was our woman woman of the year last year because she comes through clutch. So uh, appreciate you, Stephanie Baba. We love you, girl. Um, all right, our next segment. Let's move on to the mock draft. It's mock draft time, guys. I got a little beef with you guys. We'll get to it. We'll get to it here. Um, this week we're gonna do a mock draft of Hostess and Little Debbie snacks. Now this like I I, like, I was looking at them and there was really only like one that had like eight and I was like we got to have at least like twelve options so we can keep going back and forth so I was like hoses and little debbies are similar enough to where it'll keep it'll keep it competitive but like we're not gonna like there was if we had just done like one like there's like four like four of them that somebody could pick you know and then like we would have each gotten maybe two good ones and then like the other two people would have never heard of them you know. You had to kind of yeah. deep for them. So Hostess and Little Debbie, they're basically the same thing. They're just competing brands. But uh, let's go back to last Now, week. don't get mad. I swear to God, Alex, if you try and pick a dessert or like a little treat that isn't from one of those two companies no, I'm, I, and then get pissed at us because you're like, There's no so third smack. party on this. There's no third party on this. Okay. I've just, I wanted to be clear. Um, but last week's results, Pat won. You got your second win of the season, 43% of the vote. Although, I, just, I would like to point out that uh, I thought it was a little upsetting that Robert basically threw in the towel. Uh, was it Saturday? You were like, screw it. All right, you know what? I don't vote for me. Vote for Pat because I've had enough of Alex. And I was like, guys, what are you – what? <laughs> we can't just turn on me just to like – you didn't even care. You didn't even care. He chose the superior candidate. not to win. It was frustrating, all right? And you know what? I, I thought have, Pat had the better if, if I have to be the martyr, I'll be the martyr, all right? I'll take that L. And I still was able to get second place. And honestly, until like late Sunday, I was right neck and neck with Pat. Yeah, that one was like – At I one was point, honestly, it was like 45% like, of the vote for each close? of us. 
I thought Robert had a better list than you two, honestly. Mm. Until Nacho. I think I thought, Nacho is I, I think, think Nacho, Nacho is what tanked is what, Robert. What took Robert out of the running. And I think maybe that's what you made made you realize that later. And that's why you were like, I'm just gonna you did the whole like Bernie thing where you're like, Well, I don't want to endorse like I I, I don't want to be never mind I don't want to say I'm Trump because I don't, I don't ever want to say that. <laughs> but like I'm the guy you don't want to say like, it but you know it in your heart I'm, baby <laughs> I'm the leader I'm like the leader already on the season so you were like fuck Alex I'm just gonna go with the other guy because I loved how like yesterday I was like wow great move by Bernie to endorse Biden and it's like there's nobody else he could endorse <laughs> like if he's gonna go with a Democrat he's got to endorse the only guy left like okay. And they're like, can you believe Barack, Barack did it too? Barack endorsed Biden. Like, he was his fucking VP. Did you well, think? Uh, yeah, but, they, but he also waited until there was nobody left because it just looks bad as the president or as a former president to endorse someone and then they don't make it. And then you have to throw your endorsement again. Like, I don't see, which I don't get. I don't, I don't get why people say that's bad optics. I'm like, well, no, he just thought he was. But of course, he's still going to support the guy who wins it because he is, whoever wins it is usually the best candidate. And they're the same party that you are in, which is typically what... How endorsements work, they, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I thought it was funny yesterday. Like, wow, this is huge that Biden got an endorsement from Obama. I was like, is it? Like, he's going to get an endorsement from every Democrat there is. Like, that's how it works, guys. Do you not... Are, it's not crazy. Like, I can't believe that Paul Ryan endorsed Trump. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't. <laughs> he's fucking Republican. Like, no, no way. The Republican endorsed the Republican. The Democrat endorsed the... Well, the Bernie yeah, one is insane. big because Bernie could have went with his own party and actually endorsed the socialist candidate, but he didn't do that. So last week's results were Pat at 43%, <laughs> Alex 38%. You know what I just talked ticks? You know what I just talked politics? And then at 19%. Yeah, talking so, ticks. Talking ticks, baby. That's what we're doing here. Um, yeah, so yeah, Pat... Pat did get the win with the 43%. And uh, like 38%, though, it was closer than that for a lot of the weekend, I thought. Um, on the season, I am the leader with four wins, 16 points. We do, you win, you get the three points. You're second, you get one. You don't, you're, you're finishing third, you don't get any. So I have four wins, 16 total points on the season. Robert and Pat are tied with two wins apiece and eight points on the season. So this week's draft order, the mock draft of Hostess and Little Debbie Snacks. The draft order is going to go Robert, me, and Pat. There is no snake draft, so it's going to go Robert, me, Pat, Robert, me, Pat, Robert, me, Pat, Robert, me, Pat. Snake draft is mock draft, or uh, is uh, Mount Rushmore's season, and that's coming up here in a little bit. But let's get right to it. The mock draft of Hostess and Little Debbie Snacks. Let's get to it. Robert, who are you going to go with first? So it's not my favorite, but it's the most recognizable one. Twinkies. I figured that was going to be number one. That it's makes a solid sense. pick. It's, yeah, it's the most obvious number one pick I thought in, in a while. Um, all right. Uh, so Robert's going Twinkies. Now, I feel like, like it's weird because I have some that I feel like I like more, but like aren't the best ones, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's not, I'm not going to waste a pick on something that I don't think anybody else is going to agree with. Um, hey, I mean, last week I just went with my gut and I won. Dude, okay, this is this is actually this is this is my favorite of all of them, and I think it's gonna fuck me. Star Crunch, Star Crunch is it fucking is a good one. insanely good, dude. I used I, to in college, I would go through a whole fucking box of them on my own in one sitting, and it was just like, I oh wish no. I could have had that higher on my list because I do like them a lot. Star Crunches are dope. Which Star Crunch. people, people, before you vote, you got to look at all the, and of course we'll put pictures on the Twitter poll too. But it was uh, just like the rice chocolate, like yeah. crispy. People, it people was probably awesome. don't realize what Star Crunch is just listening off the top of their head. But when you see it, you'll be like, oh yeah. We'll post pictures on the graphic we put out on, uh, on Friday. So do check that out before you go and vote. So I'm going to go Star Crunch on uh, that I'm, one for my um, first pick. I'm a little surprised that this one's still here. I kind of figured Twinkies would go number one, but I'm surprised you didn't grab it, Alex. Cosmic Brownies. Fuck. All right. Those Cosmic go. Brownies just hit different, bro. <laughs> Nothing like, man, you open that thing, and just the, the, the perfect thickness and consistency of those, oh, goat status. That is pretty good. That's the uh, Little good. Debbie Cosmic Brownies over this. We got yeah. two Little Debbies, one Hostess. Robert, back to you. Second round pick, what you got? Okay, I'm going to pick my favorite this time, and I'm going to go with Nutty Buddies. 
Naughty oh, Buddies. Oh, those, those are, are good. Favorite. Those are good. Dude, dude elementary school, that, that was That's it. all it that reminds me of, too. Yeah. That was my everyday snack. Did you get the thing? Did you do the thing where you'd, like, you know how like, you could peel kind of, like, the top little, like, Oh, you got to separate little every top layer. layer off, but it was like that big. And then like, you'd have the whole rest of it, but you had the inside. It was the best. Was no, the I, best. I would twist and pull each layer and eat each layer individually. That's a good so one. like, um, the, the, like, cause you'd get two of them in a package and each package had two in it. And each one had like six layers. So I, I could eat that fucker for like 20 minutes. Okay. Now this, I'm just, I, I'm going to try and throw it out there. I know you took cosmic brownies fudge brownies do i get like did you get do you get all the brownies or does fudge think, brownies those are the ones with like the nuts in them instead of just i'm the not necessarily a, I, you know I'll, I'll allow it just because it does have nuts instead of the confetti i that's why if i not, didn't say I understand just the and i can go i can you know what i'm not gonna take it i'm not gonna take it just because i'll I think allow it's it too if you want to take it I'm not gonna you've take already it taken it you've already said no, it. i'm not gonna take it because okay. i think it's too similar and i think that it'll it'll confuse people i'm gonna go oatmeal cream pies Oatmeal cream no, pies are fucking no. awesome, Take dude. the brownies instead, Oatmeal you cream pies. Oatmeal cream pies are my fucking jam. My dad those? always would have those around the house. And so, like, as a kid, you're like, oh, fucking oatmeal cream pie. I could eat 80 of those. In, in just those like, are actually my favorite out of all of them, but I felt Cosmic Brownies had to go one. Oatmeal mm -hmm. cream pies, I got that in the second round. <sighs> all right, I'm going to take fudge brownies. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Man, you, just, you just go um, all brownies? Uh, I'm going – dude, the honey buns. That's a good one, too. That was that, honey surprised. buns, bro. I'm surprised that was honestly, like, around still. Right? Like, I thought that's where you were going to go. And I, well, I was hoping that's where you were going to go and oatmeal cream pies would be for me. But I, I know that I, I didn't take honey buns because, like, I like honey buns, but I'm nowhere near – like, they're nowhere near the top of my list like a lot of the other things are. I, I just know that, like, most people are going to have honey buns. Now, like number now one, does that include the iced honey buns as well, or is it just it, honey buns? Honey buns, let's just all, let's all throw honey buns in there. Yeah, I, I kind of figure, you know, if you're getting one, you know, you're pretty much getting the other. Right. So honey buns off the board. Robert, third round pick. What you got, bud? All right. I think I'm going to go with the, uh, the birthday cakes. Birthday mm. cakes. All right. I like that. I like that. Those Solid. Those are not as common, I don't feel like, but those good. are still, like, every time you could get them, those are fucking bomb. Mm. Birthday cakes. Those are little Debbies, right, I believe? Yes. So birthday cakes are there. Oh, dude, I'm just, I'm torn right now, man. Um, yeah, this is where it's getting difficult now, because now we're getting meat and potatoes. I have one I think is going to fall until the fourth round, so I'm going to sit on that one. And then, Fuck. I'm going to go Ding Dongs. I'm just going to go Ding Dongs. Those are classic. Those are classic. Fun name. Everybody's had a bunch of those in their life. Yeah, the name's funny. So I'm going to go Ding oh, Dongs. Have you? Not like the, not like the, the, the food. <laughs> ding Dongs. I'm going to go with Ding Dongs. That's my first hostess pick, I believe. This is a hard one for me because I'm trying to decide which one to go with of these. But... I'm going to go with the powdered donuts. Powdered donuts. Yeah. Those are good. Yeah. Those are good. Those are good. Yeah. I wasn't sure powdered or chocolate, but I'm going to, I'm going to go powdered. They're both, you know, both phenomenal. Those are the donuts, right? Yeah. Whatever the fuck. You, everyone knows what we're talking about. The little package of six of them that come in a little thing. You eat them all in 36 seconds. All right. I'm going to go with... Your final pick, Bobby. This is I'm gonna it. Go, yeah, there's a lot I'm, left, honestly. There is. There's a lot left. Okay, so I don't know if this will even count. I'm just going to throw it out there. Little Debbie herself, because she's a snack. Whoa, mm. that's problematic as shit, man. She's like yeah. five years old. Yeah, that is, we don't. Nope, we're gonna we're gonna veto that one just because it's very. We're gonna save you from an FBI investigation, and we're gonna veto that. That's not a great look. I know, I know that wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna. I just had to say it. I'm gonna also, go. Uh, we don't objectify her. <laughs> She's a businesswoman. All right, I'm gonna go with the the chocolate marshmallow pies. Can we just okay. say marshmallow pies. Sure, marshmallow We'll give you pies. all marshmallow pies because there's a lot of those. I thought, like, 
I guess the, I'm not going to pick it, but snowballs. I thought like there were like 85 different kinds of snowballs. Yeah. You could go. So I'm, we'll just give you marshmallow pies. And I knew this would probably fall, but this is my favorite of all of them. And it's seasonal. It, you, you could have them. It, but if it was year round, I would get them every single time I went to the store. I'm going to go with the little Debbie Christmas tree cakes. Those are my favorite things of, of either They're of damn these good. brands all time. My mom used to always get them, and I would fucking, again, like I said, with a Star Crunch, I could eat them all in one sitting. So, Little Debbie's Christmas Tree Cakes, my final pick, and I feel like that's a fucking steal in the fourth round. I was going to pick that one too, but like it's seasonal, so I wasn't quite sure. They're the best ones. They're, I would put those against anything that we've taken so far, and I would take those over them. They're damn good. Can't argue with that, man. Now, I don't know. I might go rogue. This is tough because you have so many options. But I had, like, it's like, like, I had my one, like they're going to go to waste if you don't take them. I had my list, and now I'm just scrolling through on Google to make sure I don't miss anything, and I see something that I kind of want to go rogue for, and I don't know if I can. I think, you know, I'm just, I, I'm going to not mess with it. I'm going to go uh, ho hos. Okay. I ho-hos. thought it was weird that those hadn't been taken yet, honestly. Yeah. But the ho-hos, the ho-hos were like the knockoff ding-dongs, right? Pretty much. So I got the better version of those, just FYI, when you're voting. I got like No, I mean, it's just You got the uh, off-brand, basically. Hold on, let me let me Google them both again, again. Why did I just repeat that? Google them, Google them again, again. I th- okay, so ding-dongs with a circle. Ho-hos. Things on the circle with the little squiggly lines and the white across the... Oh, you know what it was? Ho-hos was, uh, you know, yours was more of like a cupcake shape, and ho-hos were the long ones. So it was like a long tube. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why it was different, yeah. Ho-hos. D- d- different delivery service. All right, so that was our, uh, our mock draft of Hostess and Little Debbie Snacks. Let's go over what everybody got. Robert had Twinkies, Nutty Buddies, Birthday Cakes, and marshmallow pies. That's a fucking solid list, Bobby. Strong um, list. I, I, honestly, all of ours look pretty good. Dude, look they're all super strong. Um, it's all snacks, And I am man. starving, yeah. I, I had Star Crunch, Oatmeal Cream Pies, Ding Dongs, and Christmas Tree Cakes. And Pat had Cosmic Brownies, Honey Buns, Powdered Donuts, Slash Donuts, and Ho-Hos. Let's get to some honorable mentions here. Now, I honestly, like, I really feel like we took all the ones that were, like, worth taking. Um, there was one I wrote down that like I was like I'm never gonna take it, but mini donut or mini muffins just because a muffin is better than mini muffins. But like when I would go to school, sometimes my mom would give the little mu- mini muffins. Bro, the mini muffins hit different. You just toss those bad boys in your mouth. They're great. Um, so good. Uh, the, uh, zebra the cakes. Be- I was surprised zebra cakes didn't get. That's picked. that's kind of what I was torn between on that last one was uh, between ho hos, zebra cakes, and Swiss rolls because they're all basically the same thing. And then Emma's favorite of all of these is the strawberry shortcake rolls, kind of a spinoff of the Swiss rolls. Which is kind of what the one, the one that I was thinking about going rogue with was the, the Be My Valentine Little Debbies, you know, just the Valentine Little Hearts. I do remember hearts. those, yeah. Those were so good, man. And also, there was... Little Debbie's know, when, seasonal when shit them, doesn't when fuck every, around. When everybody was getting little Valentines from everybody in class, and you get treats or candy, and then bam, that was somebody the gold. throws that those was like out. Gold. And you were like, man, you went hard with the little Debbies on these. Um, I had the Hostess cake slices. They're kind of like the birthday cake. They're just not more birthday cake flavor. It's more of a stick. And those were very like, uh, like I didn't have those anywhere near as much as I had all the other ones. But every time you did, you're like, damn, these are good. Mm-hmm. Of course, like- the, um, you know, I went powder, but the chocolate donuts and the cinnamon. Cinnamon was always underrated. Nobody got those, but those cinnamon ones went hard. Yeah, the cinnamon ones were good. Did you have any extra? Honorable mentions, Bobby. No, honestly, I don't. I don't even like most of like the hostess ones. I'm like a uh, little Debbie, and I didn't know too many of them. Yeah, little Debbie. Like looking through all of them and preparing for this, little, little, little Debbie's, Debbie's better. Way better. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Way better. I think hostess just gets the name recognition from Twinkies because Twinkies like is such a staple. People will talk about Twinkies so much like obviously that's why it had to be number one i feel like like because mm-hmm. if you had to take twinkies i would have just had to take twinkies because like it's just name recognition you know it's like nike or i mean my top four or five are all little debbie i would go star crunch oatmeal green pies christmas tree cakes and then probably nutty buddies i would say would be my yeah dude i'm four. i'm uh 
oatmeal pie, add, like, cosmic in, in brownie, nutty buddy, and uh, probably Star Crunch. There, I, yeah, like Star Crunch is. Re- it's it, it was a very underrated one that people when they see it they'll remember it. But I feel like not a lot of people got them. I know I felt weird taking it first, but like. It's so fucking good. It's up there. It's if so everybody good, tried man. it, you would agree with me that it is up there as a first round pick. Rice is underrated for like being thrown in dessert stuff. People are like, oh, it's whatever. It's rice. You're like, nah, dude. Like, see, that's one of the few it. situations where I'm like, I'm cool with rice in a in a candy. You know, like usually I'm not as cool with it, but like Star Crunch, I'm like, I'm all about this. I'm all about all this. about the Star I'm, Crunch. I can eat twelve at a time if you just give them to me over and over. I used to buy two boxes because I knew the day I got home, like the first box was out of there. So it was like, cool, I have this one that I'll just sit on after that. But I'm going to eat all of these at first. But, uh, yeah. That good old childhood metabolism. <laughs> right? Uh, so that was a pretty fun That was a pretty fun mock draft, honestly. Like, I didn't expect a lot of us to go where he did. And it was funny where that was one of the few where it's like there were only so many to take. So everybody's draft board is kind of shifting. Because you're like, ah, nope, nope, nope. Okay, that's off. That means I got to go here. You know, like. I really also like the fudge brownies, the ones with the nuts in it, but, like, it's too close to the cosmic brownies. It's just really, like, you just do a different topping on it. Because my dad always taught me – like, we were, we were a little Debbie family growing up. And uh, we had no cream pies. We had, we had the fudge brownies were the two that my dad liked the most. So that was kind of the, the two that I got. But my dad always taught me, like, with the ones with the nuts in them, you put them upside down and you smashed it on, like, whatever countertop or table you're on, and then it shoves the, like, nuts more into the brownies, so it's better. And just have just them the shove them nuts right in there. Shoving those, putting that nut in there. Putting no, I, honestly, the as an adult, I would probably prefer the the nut, just regular fudge brownie over the cosmic brownie. And people also don't because, like nuts too, so you're gonna lose. But that's those. the thing. As a, as a kid, it wasn't really there for me. So the little bits of like candy or whatever the fuck those things were. So like now, I would probably prefer that, but I would still buy the cosmic, just right? Because you know that's that's my childhood. That's right. That's my corazón. Corazón. That's a word. I don't know what that means, but I get you. Heart. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I thought it meant Corona. <laughs> um, well, that was our What Would Jesus Do segment. Let's get to our not cool segment. Now, something that is. No, no that was our mock draft our, segment. Our mock draft. You're right. You're right. That was our mock draft segment. Before that, it was the WWJD segment. But uh, our, our mock draft segment. Um, so we'll post that about like 1.30 on Friday. I'll make a little graphic for you. Then you guys can go vote on our Twitter poll. And uh, we'll see. We're getting towards the end of mock draft season. So this will be interesting. This is actually one of the most interesting ones I think we've done this season. So uh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, if you guys have any mock draft ideas, hit us up on, uh, on Twitter at Pass the Pod, and we may use them if they're good. Um, one thing that is really not cool, though, before we get to not cool, is having a smelly car. Maybe, you know, a lot of you guys have been at home for a long time. A stinky house. Anything like that, it's, uh, it's stinky. And uh, that, sucks. that sucks to have that shit. So uh, one thing that's cool to help for that is Little M Air Fresheners. They take care of you. If you're one of the lucky ones that can still go shopping online, obviously. And go check out littlemshop.com. That's littleemshop.com. All orders are 20% off until further notice. 20% off? What a steal. What a steal, guys. Use that stimulus check. You can, you can like, bank on that stimulus check because you're, you're hitting 20% off at Little M. Like, they're basically can you imagine giving how many stuff. air fresheners you can get with twelve hundred dollars? So many. So you can make many. the whole world smell better. Yeah, the world. The world. Oh my God! Like, just drop those all over New York City, and New York is going to smell fantastic. You I know Stephanie Day Bow Bow was saying. School- Stephanie Day Bow said she got a new one for her boyfriend's car, and she threw the old one in her uh, in her backpack. And she's like, every time I open Brilliant. the backpack, it smells fantastic. And I know Casey was saying she did that in the diaper bag and the little, uh, the little diaper genie that they have whenever they change that. It's a nice, like I tell you guys, the life hack we have is you throw it in the trash can. And every time you change the bag, you're like, what is that? Oh, it's a little air freshener. Nice. You could make a high school boy's locker room smell good with these things, man. You, you really man, could. And almost yeah, throw nothing it in your, can do that. Throw it in your gym bag. Yeah. You can save 20% off until further notice using the code HOMEBODY at checkout. And as – Always, there's free shipping when you spend ten dollars or more. That means you get like five air fresheners. You're Gucci, and they also have other stuff besides air fresheners. You can get some sweet keychains. I know those keychains are flying off the shelves right now. And have you seen the new postcards? I know a lot of you guys are missing your friends. They're stuck at home. You can go get these awesome new little M air freshener postcards. They're PDFs. You can buy them. They're just two dollars a piece. You print them out, then you can send them to your friends. It's like greetings from the couch, greeting from the quarantine zone. 
And a it's handwritten like, note is always you. the best. Yeah, and uh, that's kind of cool. It'll, it'll let your friends know, like, oh, hey, so-and-so cares about me. But uh, use that code HOMEBODY at checkout, and you're going to save 20% off your order. Uh, if you miss your friends, let them know by sending them something from Little M. They've got lots of low-priced items that are both fun and useful. Air freshers to freshen up not only your car, but any place you have. And I know a lot of you guys have some stinky homes right now. Hand-painted journals to document this super crazy time. It is healthy for you to just document, like, jot down two or three sentences about how your day has gone. And uh, that'll be kind of a little fun little, like, quarantine journal you can look back on later. Their, their journals are cool looking and they're they're very cheap especially with 20 percent off uh they also have awesome prints to decorate your new home office and stickers to give your kids to shut up to just sh sh shut them up like, shut up here's, here's some stickers just shut the hell up kid get away from me stick these on things and uh or just throw the stickers at them or just throw the stickers at them yeah that would be or stick the sticker on their mouth and they can't talk there you go yeah, that's the what's the one um yeah so give the stickers to your kids shut them up little m shop.com 20 percent off with, co with promo code HOMEBODY at checkout, littleemshop.com, 20% off with the promo code HOMEBODY at checkout and free shipping on orders of $10 or more. Little M Air Fresheners, the best air fresheners in the entire world. If you're getting a Little M Air Fresher, hit us up on Twitter at Pod. Hit them up at Little M Tweets or on Instagram at Little M Shop. Let them know that you're supporting the people that support us because Little M Shop, best damn air fresheners, best damn keychains, best damn stickers, best damn everything. In the entire world, littleemshop.com. That's littleemshop.com. They are the official presenters of our not cool segment this week. And uh, let's get right to that. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. All right, I will, uh, I'll start us off with not cool because I feel like we've already talked about it this week, but my not cool is just, it's like a, oh no, we'll read it. We'll read listeners submitted not cools. You can submit them to us. Hashtag PTG not cool at Pat Pod. I'm at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dion. It can be something as little as stubbing your toe, something as big as getting run over by a car. Like all of those are not cool. But if it makes you say, hey, that's not cool, man, then uh, there you go. Uh, our first not cool from you guys comes from Ashley with an I Wilkins at Buster Healer Mix on Twitter. She says long online meetings. I feel you on that one. I feel you on that one. I wouldn't know, but I can assume it sucks. But like, can't you just like take the video off and then do whatever the fuck you want? And like, I feel like you should be able to, but maybe. It looks yeah. Like but then if somebody amazing. talks and says something to you, you got to be yeah. ready. That is true. That is true. Um, or sometimes there's screen sharing and you have to look at what's on the screen. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, you've got a lot of those meetings you've had to be doing lately. Robert. Hey, just, you know, quit your job and work in a fucking restaurant. You'll make a lot less money and be a lot less happy, but at least you won't have to deal with that. Didn't sell that very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, our next one comes from, ooh, Josh Tree Cottle at Joshua Tree 713 he says, I wasn't charged a cable bill last month that's set up for auto pay, and I received a new bill with late charges. Well, I forgot when I got a new card after it expired, or if my other one's number expired, that's on me, but I can't dispute it or anything because I can't talk to a real person and everything is automated and pissing me off. I don't want late fees on my record. Uh, I don't think that like follows you forever. It's just like, like if you yeah, constantly if does, are paying late, if you're constantly playing late, then like, yeah, maybe. But like, if you pay it and you just pay the late fees, like that's happened a couple times with my like, my like electricity bill. Where I'm like, oh shit, that was due yesterday, and like, you just pay like, like whatever the fifteen dollar or twenty dollar fee, and it's just like mm -hmm. that sucks. But they like, if you pay the fee, like I don't think that they like, they're like, oh, he doesn't pay. It's if you don't pay any of that stuff and you're just always behind. That's when your shit gets turned off. But that does suck. I like, it is one of the most frustrating things. Nowadays we have the auto pays and you get a new card or whatever and you're just like, fuck, all right, like, damn it. I got to go change nine things. You always forget one and then you get the email like you didn't pay it. And you're like, ah, damn it. I got to go back in here. And it's like, oh, my Xbox Live. I forgot to update the, the, the payment on that or whatever. And it's, that is frustrating. It is frustrating, but it is also frustrating that you forgot about that and then you had to pay the late. So, yeah, that is not cool. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, our next one comes from david ruiz at david underscore ruiz 90s in the running for past the gravy's rookie of the year this year he says when you have to come back to work only four days after someone tested positive for rona aren't we supposed to close down for two weeks um i believe that only is like if you were exposed to it but if you're sharing the same stuff 
and they didn't do a deep clean, then yeah, that is kind of fucked up. But if you're saying that it was a couple weeks after it, or how many days was it? Four days? Four days. It was just four days. Like, yeah, maybe they could have deep cleaned, but uh, it's uncomforting, you know? Yeah. It is, it is That's a rough one. Um, I feel like uh, Kara Lee got it, but we had like a whole cleaning crew come in and they did a huge deep clean and I felt safe. Huge. I was, huge. I felt safe when I, uh, when I was going into work. So like, I guess it just depends on how you feel. Like everybody's a little bit on edge, but yeah, it doesn't help that like, you're like, I know that somebody that was here got it. So I just hope I don't get it. But fuck Rona, dude. Fuck Rona. Uh, so that was our last fuck that Rona. Of, of our uh, l- listener submitted not cool. I'll go with mine. And it's just really like, it's the XFL again. Like we already talked about it, but the XFL folding was like, what the fuck? I think Brandon white had the same exact one as me. So I'm just going to use that one anyways. But like, it was my favorite thing, man. I had like all these Saturdays and Sundays I got to go to. I was a Thursday night game. I was going to get to go to recently. They didn't end up happening, but it was like, the XFL was so much fun. It was the best party. Like I've ever gone to It was a football game that just it was a party that a football game broke out with. I think cliff cliff hog. And I talked about this on the Monday episode you'll hear, but it was like, it was a football. It was a party that you went to and a football game happened while you're at it. So like, hell yeah. Let's hop on board with this. But, uh, Fuck, man. Like, the XFL, I was so happy when it came out as a kid, when my dad told me there was another season of football we were going to watch in the same year. And that went away after one year. And then this, it seemed like it was so, it was primed. And then fucking Rona just ruined fucking everything. I think, though, if Rona, Rona. If Rona didn't happen, I do think the XFL lasts another year. Oh, yeah. It was fun. It was I, getting I coverage. It's, it's, Gamblers were into it. I was crushing it, gambling on the XFL. This the, is worse. the structure is there. I I firmly believe it's coming back and it's going to last. It may not last forever. It may not last ten years. It may not last five years. But it's when it comes back, it's going to be a multiple year. And I think it's going to keep going because they finally set it up right and they're not trying to directly compete with the NFL, like uh, like what's it called did back in the day? USFL. Um, USFL. They tried to go after the NFL. You cannot go after a juggernaut. Joe Exotic learned that. They didn't take themselves too seriously, and that's what I loved about them. They knew what they are. It's a developmental league. But if you have football on, people are going to watch. People are going to watch. Maybe not as many as the NFL, but people are going to watch, including me. And, uh, yeah, that uh, fucking sucks. So, the XFL folding, that's my not cool this week. Robert, you want to go next? I got four. Yeah, so mosquitoes, they have started to come out, and Mm. they hang out for some reason right by my front door. So every single time I, I leave the house, you know, go outside, they t- take that opportunity to go into the house. And then I'm dealing with that like all night long, you know, buzzing around and s- trying to sleep. The mosquito. I got man. three words for you. Off deep woods. It's the only one that ever worked for me. Off deep woods? Yeah. I'll have to get that in deep mind. Deep woods. Like, I, I mean, growing up playing baseball constantly all summer, every summer, every weekend, traveling everywhere, regular off didn't work for me. When I put on the off deep woods, that shit worked. Now, and it's possible they've come up with better stuff by now or even improved that formula to work even better. But though that maybe even just spray your door frame with it. Spray right around there. Yeah. I'm if you don't want to be covered in off all the time. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather just spray it on the door frame rather than myself. I don't want to be sticky. Try it. Like that could work. Just drink it. And it's in your blood, and then you're just emitting that. Try that. Here's what you do. You uh, you spray it all over uh, some beans. You eat the beans. You start farting a cloud of off the – Actually, you know, they make those things that, that you can just, sense. like, wear, like, on your hip now that gives you, like, a bubble of, mm-hmm. like, off. I've never tried those, but I've seen commercials for years, and maybe you can let us know how those work. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate that idea. I don't hate that. Do some PTG R and D. Just make smoothies, but like throw a little off in there with the smoothies, so it like you don't taste it really, but like it's there. Uh, okay, I'll try it. Uh, I'm, just one- gonna, I'm just gonna say yes. I'm just gonna say yes. <laughs> one summer growing up, when I when we didn't live in Houston, we would come in here and visit. Like we would come into town to visit my family, and like we would hang out with my cousins and stuff. And I remember my brother and I one time filled up one of those ha- hairspray bottles with just sugar and water. And we gave it to my cousin and told him it was like we made our own bug spray. 
and he sprayed it all over and we went and we played baseball in the front yard and he was just getting eaten alive and my brother and i thought it was so funny you're like, a fucking piece of shit but <laughs> looking back we were like we were ever dicks ever but it was hilarious you're a that's monster the meanest, dude a monster that's well, i think we were like annoyed monster. with him he was being a dick or something but we were like haha he's getting eaten alive though so fuck you you're a fucking psychopath, a little, dude. A little life hack if you have if you do a camping with somebody you hate. Like, I have some homemade bug spray. Saw it on YouTube. Try this out. And like, I am getting Ooh. just destroyed. Actually, here's the thing now, guys. If you've got kids and they're fucking pissing you off all day, every day, give them a little sugar water. Spray it on them. Tell them to go outside. And say, shut the fuck up and go to sleep. That's, <laughs> that's revenge that won't get CPS called on you. There you go. Thinking with the noggin right there. Yeah. All right, so, all right, I've got four. Actually, my, my first one, it starts off with, I, I, I can't believe I didn't remember to put this in my Where You Been. I had one of those adult purchases that made me super excited. I got like a, a new dildo? head for, no. Uh, no, no I'm, talk, I'm talking about, like, real-life adult adulting diaper. shit. I, I got a new head for my uh, weed whacker. You know, mm. one of those ones where it's got the three on it, where uh, you just loop the... Uh, the string through it and it's three heads and it pivots and turns, or you can put the hard blades on there because I really had to go to town on my driveway because shit was way overgrown because I've never paid attention to it. <laughs> so I got one of those. I've been super happy. I fucking loved it. I actually burned through those three hard blades already anyway. But when I went to go uh, refuel it, cause it ran out of fuel halfway through, I refueled it. I stand up and to go start it again, I didn't put the cat back on, so I spilled fuel all over my fucking – like, right inside my garage and all Ooh. over my fucking leg. That sticks so like, with you. Like, you take a shower and you still kind of smell it after that. Well, luckily, like, it was just on the jeans. I washed the jeans with just some other – like, I soaked the jeans first in the bathtub because, like, all you right. can't just throw fuel right in there. So, like, they're good now. I actually used them again today. This was, uh, I don't know, Thursday that I did all this shit. Um, but they're good. It it sucked, but you know, you live and you learn. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, my next one is Saturday going into work. I, I've always had my alarm set Monday through Friday because that's my work schedule. I think I said this last week. Once again, forgot to set a Saturday alarm. Uh... So <laughs> was late again. I had to. How late? Just... How late were you? I mean, late. Like it doesn't really matter when I get in there. It was just. Fuck, I was supposed to be there already. But, like, and how late? Half an hour. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, it's like, good, normally I would, I would be there at 10. Uh, I, I think I got a call from my boss at 10 o'clock going, hey, are you at work? And I was like, no, I'm not. Not a chance. No, but I'm uh, jumping up right now and putting my pants on. I'll be out the door in 35 seconds, and I'll See be there in half an hour. So that one sucked. Um, then today, just – I had to run a couple errands. I go to the liquor store. I go to the tobacco store. I park, not even in front of the tobacco store, down off to the side. Like 10, 15 parking spots away. And when I tell you this parking uh, uh, parking lot is empty, there's like three fucking cars. When I park, there are 16 spots directly on my left. I go in. I get my, uh, my dip. I come back out. There's a fucking Mustang parked directly on my left. Like, they're like sending parking close. Next to you? And like, he's like on the fucking line. So when I get up to my car, I have to like barely open my door and like squeeze in. I should have just thrown my fucking door open and slammed Do his it. fucking car. Yeah. Because my car is covered in dents. I don't give a shit. This dude, and he's not even going inside, he's sitting in his fucking car on the phone. Like, dude, there's 16 other goddamn spots right here. And you pinch me into my fucking car. I was pissed. I remember uh, I went out. Uh, we were going to some bar one night. And it was one of those where it was like, it should, like they were trying to fit too many people into a parking spot, into parking spots that were like, there were those diagonal parking spots. They're having everybody park kind of just straight. And I was like, we're not even in the line. They're like, no, just follow me. And I was like, okay, whatever. And... This guy parked and we were like an inch away from the other door. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to get out. He's like, no, you, you'll be fine. I was like, okay. But like, you're going to like take care of this car when I dent it. Right. And I didn't realize there were people in it and I opened it and it was, kunk, and it didn't like leave a mark or anything even. Uh, like, I think we had like a, like they were like two white cars. I want to say, um, but like this girl rolled down her window. She's like, 
I know you didn't just open your door into my car. And I was like, I mean, like, we were like an inch. Like, I'm, I didn't intend to do it. I apologize. And I was like, you can't, like, there's not even like a mark. Like, you didn't leave a dent. I was very gentle. And she, like, was just going off of me. I was like, look, I said, I'm sorry. Like, I don't really know what you want me to do. Like, if you want to take down this license plate, it's not my car. So that's cool. <laughs> um, like, are we going to fight about it or what? Like, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, like, you can yell at me all you want. I said, I'm sorry. So I don't really know where this conversation's going. And she was like, damn it. <laughs> so it's like, that's, this is the end of the camera. Like, I'm gonna walk away. I'm gonna go on inside. All right. I'll like, see you later. Blame the parking guy. I don't know what you fucking want. From it's, me. It was that guy's fault. I even told her. I was like, I'm not gonna. Go. Okay. So that's your fault for coming here too. And my uh, my last one, and I've probably said this already, is just my brother being a dick, uh, just sending me pictures of the ama- uh, the dogs and the amazing food that my dad cooks. Like today, he sends me. Just two fucking like sheet pans or whatever the fuck it was, just full of wings. And he goes, "Oh, this is what we're cooking for Saturday or Sunday." Like, fuck you! And then he <laughs> follows up with, "Oh, and we're doing a fish fry on Friday or, or Saturday. What the fuck it was? It was the day before." I'm like, "Dude, fuck you!" Like, I can't like. He's just our, saying, maybe, our he dad's, miss, maybe he's saying he misses you and wishes you were there, but you're just no, no, no. Like that. There's no altruism in him. Doing you don't know this. that. hundred percent. No, I do know it. <laughs> It's a hundred percent just because you know, like in my first response was fuck you. <laughs> Cause like I've said before, my dad's friend that lives up there now is the chicken wing fucking king. I've chicken never had a better wing than that this was guy an episode cooks. name. I believe I, uh, yes, it was. And I'm just like, you're such a, like older brothers are supposed to be dicks to their younger brother. I get it. But like, that's just a, dick move right now the, the dickiest of moves like you got to do this now when i can't come up for a weekend and fucking true. hug and hug my dogs and just love them and eat some chicken wings and some delicious shit my dad cooks don't get me wrong my sister cooks great food yeah she always posted on facebook i'm like damn like are you working at a re- like, like, you, like it looks like you live at a restaurant which you yeah, kind of do like, right now but like it it looks like your your sister can cook at a restaurant she could my sister can cook she could be a she, chef she she does work, but my dad is like on a whole nother fucking level. He knows his shit, so I'm just like, God damn it, dude, fuck you. <laughs> Especially the the dog ones are the ones that really hurt. Like the food, the don't food tease me with the you. with the pooches. Well, but you sent me pictures of the pups, and I'm like, dude, you're a fucking asshole. He's like, I, I still have my that. sister's dog that I can hug and cuddle, but it's not the same. Yeah, yeah, that does suck. And you don't like your sister's dog. I like the, the one that I'll cuddle. I like the small one is a piece of shit. And I hope he fucking dies every day. Whoa. Don't say, we don't say that about any dog. Oh, I will. You don't say that about any dog. Oh no, I will. He's a, no, you've never met him. If you met him one time, you'd be like, yeah, that thing needs to die. I don't, I would never say that about a dog. It's not a dog. It's not even a dog. It's not a dog. It's a demon sent from well, hell. You called it a dog initially. So I'm going to say it's a dog because technically scientifically speaking, yes, it's a dog, but no, it's a demon sent from hell. He's a piece of shit. All dogs are good. No. There's varying degrees of good dog, but all dogs are good. It may Every be a so one on the good cool. dog like, scale, but it's still a good dog. I'll like go talk to my sister and he'll like jump up on the couch next to me and like fucking like try and like rub his body against me kind of like a cat and be like, hey, what's up? And I just go, get the fuck away from me, you piece of shit. Fuck you. You're terrible. I've tried so many. I've tried so many times to be nice to this dog. And I'll pet him, you're, and then I'll well, like. Then maybe look when you're saying, "Get the fuck away from me, you piece of shit," then that's what like it's it's developed a complex now. Now it's no, like, no, no, no. This, well, is, this guy's I, mean. I, I I got to this point. Initially, I tried to be nice to this dog, that's and great. you go to pet him. I, just, I know how you are. Pat. Bites you. I know how you are. Fuck, fuck that dog. Fuck that dog. All dogs are good dogs. Coco's okay. She's a good girl. What's the other one's name? Smokey. That's a cool name for a dog, though. Well, yeah, it was a cool game when it was the German Shepherd we had when I was three years old in fucking Rhode Island, and it was the greatest dog ever. And then my sister adopts this piece of shit, and names it the same fucking name, and forever it, sullies the in name. In like in Smokey's honor, though. No, it's just because she's an unoriginal it's bitch. Honor. She can probably hear me, and she's gonna punch me in the face later. But I don't care. You should have your sister on the podcast. Let's let's see. What she I don't does. think you guys can handle that. I don't know. Maybe we could. 
But uh, so that's our that's not cool then, huh? That's yeah, man, 18, I've been having a Robert lot I had of one. not cools lately. Yeah, you have. But hey, it's like, still in time. Every week I've got four. <laughs> I don't know. I guess like like this is the segment where we get to vent. All right, that's how it goes. I know Dude, uh, there a couple was people were saying we should do that's here. cool during the sec- during this whole quarantine thing. But like, no, this is for us to vent and get all the hatred out. I think did we talk about leaving gloves in parking lots last week? Are people littering? Okay, that's one more thing. I've seen so many pictures of. Don't fucking mess with Texas, going, okay? Well, they're going to the grocery store. So, like, these, these grocery store workers, one, they're underpaid for what they're doing right now. Like, they're on the front lines. I'm not saying grocery store workers are always front line workers, but, like, right now they're fucking putting themselves out there. Like, they're getting exposed to possible COVID-19 on the reg. They're fucking going in. They should be paid more than they're getting paid right now. And, like, then there's fucking assholes that go in with the gloves and the masks, and then when they get to their car, they just shed the gloves and throw them on the fucking, like – there's, there's trash cans by the cart corrals most of the time. There's trash cans on the way out. And these people just fucking like, oh, my little COVID gloves. Fuck that. I'll just throw it here for some other fucking person to pick up and maybe get infected. And it's like, you're a fucking piece of shit. And I tweeted this out on Sunday, I want to say. It was like, uh, like, because I, I was, I was walking, I was playing fetch with my dog. And there were like six, like, pairs, or like, there were like six different gloves I saw. And I was like, those are fucking like people that had COVID gloves. And they just threw them down. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, like, I don't want these. These are kind of gross, but, like, I don't want to take them and, like, throw them away or anything. It's like, so you're just going to let the, like, fucking 18, 20-year-old kid that's fucking risking his shit out there, like, having to put up carts, like, also pick up your fucking Corona glove? Go fuck yourself. If you get caught doing that, they should ban you from grocery stores until this whole thing's over. Be like, no, yes, you can't go shopping again. Sorry. Hope you stocked up. Hope you fucking yeah. stocked up, asshole. Because it's fucking literally littering. Friend. You are fucking with Texas. And what have also, we learned from the time like, we were two years old? But you're also old? endangering people's lives. You are endangering people's lives. What if the kid that's fucking working at ACB has fucking asthma and picks up that glove He's uh, and, and like fucking is trying to do that and somehow contracts corona because you have corona. You didn't know you had corona. You just spread to this kid. This 18-year-old kid's got fucking corona. Who knows? Who knows? You're a fucking terrible human being if, one, you don't put your cart back, and you're even more of a terrible human being because I'll tell you. They're the terrorists. The people that aren't putting their fucking – like gloves up that are just th- not throwing the gloves away. Cause if you're putting it in the cart corral, then you're fucking probably just throwing the gloves in the trash can on the way out. You don't have to touch the basket anymore. Then you just go to your car. You're good. The people that are fucking new, this are probably the people that just prop it up on the curb. Like, um, I have a kid. I don't have to 100%. put my cart up. I'm just going to throw 100%. this down. Or the people that just fucking leave it in the fucking cart. There's carts that just have fucking like little blue gloves. And it. it's like, you're a fucking cunt. You're a fucking piece of shit that doesn't deserve to get to go shopping. You're probably the person that rushed out as I knock. I'm knocking out my headphones as I'm yelling so mad. I'm using my hands so much. I'm that mad. But like, like you're probably you're the meowing? person. Uh, yeah, you're probably the person that fucking like. That, yeah, you're just the worst. You're the worst fucking human being in the entire world. And you're like, I don't need to put this up. Well, there's people that get paid for that. No, fuck you. Take care of your own shit. They let you use cards for free. Return the goddamn cart. Don't be a fucking cunt fucking take your gloves out throw them in the fucking trash can or take them to your stupid car and then fucking do that i don't like there's no excuse there's no excuse you're endangering people if you don't fucking pick up your gloves don't fucking mess with texas and don't be a fucking asshole that doesn't pick up your gloves or your fucking masks or whatever don't leave it in the cart it's nobody else's problem but yours it's your problem okay it's your fucking problem i fucking hate people all right people are assholes so that's just that's one extra added not cool if you want to have that one all right that was a good rant. Rant over. <laughs> rant over. That might be that might be a little clip you want to grab. Throw that out here as a PSA <laughs> from Pasty Gravy. Just tag H E B in it. We'll go viral. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know if they would like all the cursing, but Scott, yeah, they probably mean, they probably wouldn't enjoy the liberal use of the word cunt, but <laughs> but also it's like I'm I'm pro health of employees, you know. I'm pro like those are the people that bought all of the fucking toilet paper day one. Those are the people that like ho- like hoarded all the hand sanitizer. Those are the people that like bought all the Clorox wipes. Like fuck them. Fuck those people. If I see you doing that, I'm going to call you out and I'm going to be a fucking asshole to you until you fucking pick it up. And if you don't, I'm going to fuck your shit up. I'm going to fuck your car up somehow. All right, just I'll, I will poop that? right in your tail. I will fucking grab a cart and I'll run it into your car, and I don't care. I'll run off, and I won't. I, I'll, I won't even take my car. I won't even take my car, so there's no way you can trace me. I'll just run off. I'm you know what you do? Everybody, every time you leave, buy a bag of potatoes. So as you're going through the parking lot and you see somebody, if they take their gloves off and just throw them on the ground, potato right in the tailpipe. 
it's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Yeah. I like that. All right. That was anonymous. Cool you segment. can't get, you can't grab fingerprints off a potato. I don't know if that's true, but it it's seems science. true. <laughs> Sci- no, it's science. Just go with that. All right. That was our not cool segment. And uh, that got, I got, I'm sorry. I got a little heated at the end, but I felt like that was a, that's a PSA. That's what not cool is for, man. You got to like let out the hate. But the, like, you're the worst kind of human being. If you like these kids and, and people that are working at these grocery stores right now, like I worked at a grocery store. It's a thankless job. I understand that. I was working 525 an hour. That was the first job I ever had when I was 15 years old. And it fucking sucked. I can't imagine being a grocery store employee right now. Like you're just stocking shelves. Like, Why don't you have toilet paper? It's your fault. I know you have it in the back. You're like, shut up, Maggie. I don't fucking have any. I'm not hoarding the toilet paper. I'm not trying to fuck you over. I'm just doing my Maggie. fucking job. I don't know. I'm just coming up with names. You had Karen right there. I don't know. I use Karen too much. I think some like some lady named Maggie seems like the kind of lady that would be like bitch. I've only ever known one employee. Maggie. And or a guy, like, maybe. Or a guy. Or a guy. Or a guy. Jake. <laughs> Jake, maybe. Yeah. Maybe Jake. Arthur. <laughs> I'm trying to think if he, I'm, I, I know we Arthur have. Arthur would be a dickhead's name. Ar, no, Arthur's the, Arthur seems like a cool guy. Arthur Anson? Like, yeah, that's an Anson move. Like where you have like a last <laughs> name for a first name. Like one of those. <laughs> well, fuck those. Bryson? People, Somebody named like your first name is Anderson. Anderson Cooper. That's a fucking tool name. Like Anderson Cooper's not like a tool, but like that's an like that's like a that's like a frat boy douchebag name. Like Anderson Cooper's like one of like the cooler ones. I feel like of them. I don't any I don't know any other Andersons honestly. Like as a first name, but like that does sound like it seems like a guy named Anderson I. would do that. All right, right, I think we can move on to answers now. Let's go to the answers segment. Um, if you have, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Just wait, 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 no, no, no. I was gonna fucking mute him so he couldn't say it. Um, <laughs> I didn't yeah. get to it in time. Yeah, I didn't you're get too slow, bitch. But uh, there's no such thing as a stupid question. You just stupid people. Stuff. If you got a high thought, you got a thought you come up with in the shower. Uh, you see it on a billboard. You see it online. You're like, I wonder what the gang at PTG would have to say. Hit us up hashtag PTG answers on Twitter at Pat Pod. I'm at Alex J Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dan Roberts at Robert Barbosa zero three. You can also email them, but we do look at Twitter first. Hashtag PTG answers at Pat Pod. And if you want to email them, we will also look at emails as well. But uh, hey, we're trying to do two episodes a week, guys. So if you could just like stockpile some answers for me to just have on like on stock, you know, like I need to be going, we're going to be going through answers questions more than, than anything we like, I think in the cliff hog one, I went through a lot of email ones. I want to say that I did. So, cause like a lot of times, like I'll let the email ones kind of add up and like, I just cleaned up the email ones with, uh, with cliff hog. So we need to, we need to get a nice little stockpile of answers questions. If I'm going to start doing the double podcast weeks, cause we're, we're trying to give you guys the content. But if we don't have that, then we're only going to have like one, two answers questions. That's not any fun. That's not any fun with guests. And the guests are the best ones because it's like they don't know how – like Cliff Hogg on Monday's one that you'll get to hear. It was kind of like – there were a couple of like, what is this? Like, what segment <laughs> is this? But he was, he was I, a good sport about just, it. I can picture Cliff's face just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Cliff was a good sport though. Cliff was fun. Cliff oh, was of course. Of Cliff is the man. He's the best. Um, so hashtag PTG answers at past the gravy pod or answers at past the gravy pod.com. This guys is the answer. Segment. Or if you just answer the question, why don't you just answer the question? Be honest. No big deal. Yeah, answer. Answer the question. Don't change the subject. Just answer the fucking question. Yep, yep, right. Like, my question is the question. Answers, 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 Any questions? All right, our first answers question, as usual, comes from our podcast son, Skylar Lester. Oh my God, it's Skylar! At OMG, it's Skylar. He says, do Roombas keep your house clean by forcing you to pick up your stuff so it doesn't get stuck on something? Yes. I've never had a Roomba, but it does make sense. I can see the logic behind that because like, I do see a lot of times people are like, oh, my fucking Roomba got stuck in between this and this. And it's like the couch in the corner of the room or whatever. And like that does suck that you have like a four hundred dollar vacuum that didn't do anything. Or yeah, well, I mean, my you've all seen the a... shit Roomba, right? What? Do- you've all seen the shit Roomba where it was somebody's dog shit in the oh, living room in the middle yeah. of the night, and the Roomba like ran over it and tried to clean mm-hmm. it, but then like everywhere else <laughs> it, went, it was just shit. Bless you. Thank you. You know that travels thirteen feet, right? FYI. Well, uh, as I you learned can that see, this week, there's a wall. 
to my it travels right, through so. walls it's like a ghost <laughs> well on the other side Don't of the wall that. is nothing because that's the edge of the house so well now the neighbors are getting it so great oh good fuck those guys um yeah i definitely think like that is like a <laughs> sneaky good reason for like rumors where it's like no you can't have this stuff out like you can't like your kids toys can't be out or else it'll fuck up the Roomba. so it, it, like uh my parents like didn't always have a maid, but they did for a little while when I was in high school. And like after we graduated, they had a maid. But uh, like my mom would always be like, "Make sure you clean up your room." Like, no, we have a maid. Yeah. We're paying her to like, clean things. Why do I need to clean up to, for the maid to clean up? And it's kind of like that's what the Roomba sense. is. Yeah, but it does as now. As an adult, as she's an adult, like, you're like, you no, no, she's there to clean, not pick up. Right. Well, like, yeah, she's got to be able to walk in your room, and you just have shit all over it. Like, yeah, all right. I yeah. get it now, mom. I was well, actually, but here's the thing, though. My parents have one of these, and it's idiot. not like toy, like dog toys and stuff being in the way isn't a problem. This thing will get stuck on like, like carpet edges, or like it, when it goes, like if you have it's a tight. dining room, it's been room, out all day, and it was just on the fucking carpet edge, just stuck there. A dining room table, like it'll find its way in between the chair legs, and then be stuck in underneath that chair for 15 minutes but that is a sneaky That's the good kind way of weird shit to get stuck on for like roombas to just be like here's a 400 dollars vacuum also you're gonna do most of the cleanup and then it'll just pick up dirt i mean maybe it's also because my parents don't have the roomba they have like whatever the zumba different <laughs> off-brand one the so Zumba. Like, why why pay name brand when you can get the same exact equipment for Two hundred dollars less. No, I fail you on that. I fail on that. Um, yeah, I, I do agree with you, Skyler. Mm. I think I think we'll say yeah. Like it does uh, just kind of force oh, you to pick up stuff, so it doesn't get stuck. Yes. Because like I, I don't again like yeah we're not millionaires, but I don't have a Roomba either. But like it would suck if you're like you come home every day and your room is just stuck on something different. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Figure it out. Go in the other room, man. <laughs> Turn we have, around. We don't have four wheel drive on this bitch. All right, um, like, like the, the same fucking shit that the Mars rover was built out of is what the fucking Roomba should be built. Like, it should have all-terrain tires where it can get out of any sticky situation ever. Honestly, Roombas, for the amount of money you pay, should be able to go up walls and, like, clean up your ceiling. There'd be, like, shit. three people on the planet that could afford that. You understand that Mars rover, if you're going to use the same equipment, this Roomba is going to be – Just the wheels. Just the wheels. Like, $200 million. I'm not saying – like, I don't need a fucking camera on it. Okay. Just the wheels. Just, just the wheels. It's a fifteen million dollar Roomba, dude. That's just so they can. They just put that price tag on this. So they can take taxpayer dollars. There's no way it costs that much. <laughs> There's no like we built a robot, and there was like, well, how much is that robot? Like, ah, I don't know, fifteen million. Also, There's no other the ones Roomba, like this. And they're like, well, fuck, we'll pay it. We're NASA. The Roomba can't be elevated. It needs to Maybe be. Maybe it should be. <laughs> Maybe it should be. No, no, that's the the whole. Add some suction to that bitch. Bottom. Add some suction to that bitch. Let it go up walls. Like, I want it to be able to do everything. If you're paying $400 for a goddamn vacuum, that better be able to fuck. Like, I don't want it getting stuck on fucking carpet. I agree with that, but also then you should probably just buy a fucking vacuum. No, then I have to do the work. The whole point of a Roomba is, like, I can just turn it on. Like, didn't you say you have a Roomba, Robert? I do no, have my, Roomba, yes, my I parents. Do have Roomba. Does it ever get stuck? Uh, it would. I'm not using it now. It's in storage now. But it would get stuck like on the couch because the couch, the front of it, was just big enough for it to go under. But not as it started going further back, it got smaller, uh, so it always it gets stuck get there. In there. Yeah. You ever uh, see it get that. trapped underneath chairs and shit? Like I was, like I was saying. No, not underneath chairs. But you used to do yours. Uh, I guess I, if I remember correctly, didn't you say like when you do the podcast on Wednesdays, that was like your Roomba day? Yeah. You would schedule it to like day. go. Yeah. Yeah, so I would come back home and he'd... Uh, Which is a nice little, like, like, honestly, that's a solid, like, appealing luxury of having a Roomba where it's, like, tight. Somebody, like, it, it's, like, if I don't want to buy a maid or, like, having a maid come in regularly, like, cool, at least I'll have clean floors. Like, there's nothing better than, like, like, I hate when, like, I, I, I mean, I have a dog, so, like, dog always treads in dirt and shit, and, like, I do too, I guess. But, like, like when you walk in barefoot and you're, like, oh, there's, like, just grit on my feet. There's nothing better than, like, when you walk across your floor... And you're like, oh, this is awesome. There's nothing but just smooth floor under my feet. This is the best. Yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, I my house is dirty. And like every morning when I sit down to put on my socks, I got to wipe the bottom of the foot <laughs> and then put the sock on. It's got like sandpaper bottoms of your feet. Dude, I, I just, I don't give a shit. <laughs> 
Like my house isn't like dirty, dirty, but like it, like the floors, I'm not fucking sweet. <laughs> like it's not my thing. And, All right, well, you know, two dogs. So that was a good it. question, though, Skylar, and I do agree with you. Yeah, the Roomba really just helps you pick up stuff, so it doesn't have to do other stuff. So it's already sort of it's like cleaning before the maid, basically, like we said at the beginning, and then wasted ten minutes of your time just bitching about Roombas. Um, <laughs> Our next question, and I, we haven't had a question from Matthew Jadamillo in quite a bit, um, at TX Jalapeno 85 on Twitter. Matthew Jadamillo, one of my favorite last names to pronounce ever. He says, all right, now, Pat, correct me if I'm right. He says, when your face field, does he mean face shield? I think that's what he meant, shield, yeah. When your face field or shield disappears, does the camouflage really work? I don't know I think he's mean means. one of those um, – you know, you see those helmets that have that plastic just sheet that goes down in front of your face? Wait, I looked up face field mask. Wait. Look up face shield. I think that's what he's talking about. You know, like like you'll see somebody who's a welder or something like that where they have that plastic shield in front of it so you can weld and the sparks don't fly back and hit you in the face. I think that's what he's talking about. So he goes, when your camo face shield disappears, does it mean the camouflage really works? Yes, it does. Face field and face shield, if you type in camo with them, kind of the same exact stuff pops up. And it does definitely just look like it's like the scarf that you would pull up over your nose, kind of. So I don't, I don't know. But, uh, but, uh, but if it's camo and it disappears. There's no such thing as a stupid yeah. question. I don't understand this question 100%. Oh, you know, honestly. yeah, I, I think this is what he's talking about. Yeah, it's not one of the uh, plastic ones. It's one of those ones that you pull up over, from your neck. Kind of like a fishing one, face. right? Like one of those like or fishing like, or like if you're on a motorcycle, things? something that's long distance and you're just trying to cover bugs from hitting your face. So if you take the camo field and or shield, if it if it goes off It's definitely it... shield. He definitely meant to say shield. It's not a field. Okay. So when the camo face shield disappears, does the camouflage really work? I don't like if you take does he mean if you take it off? Because if you take no, it off, he... no, the camo doesn't work. No, what he's saying is – That's what I like about it, questions it, like this. We're all figuring no, no. it out as we what go. What he's saying is he can't find it. It's disappeared. Does that mean the camo is working? You know what? That makes way more sense. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was like, I thought he meant idiot. if I'm wearing camo and I take the camo off, does the camo still work? I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you idiot. So he, yeah, if you lost it, it's a hundred percent camo. Yeah, the camo yeah, like, it's doing its job. It's just unfortunate it's that like you misplaced camouflaged. it. That's why I always, I guess, in Harry Potter, what did he have? The invisibility cloak, but it was like gold yep. when he had it off. It was just when you put it on, it was invisible. I was like, it'd be funny if, like, I always thought. Uh, I don't know if any. I'm sure people have done parodies on it. Like, didn't Wonder Woman have the invisible car? Invisible plane. Invisible plane, but it was like it would be hilarious if she's just always looking for it. She's like, where the fuck did I leave it? Like, God damn it, we're trying to go fight crime. Hello? I thought I left it in this parking lot. Up, and she's just reaching out, trying to feel it. She can't find it. Which is weird, because she could also fly. Yeah, it's like, do you need to do double flies? Like, are you flying <laughs> and then also flying? Did it's just, she it's, make it, the plane fly, or did the plane help her fly? Well, I mean, the, it's a plane, so it flew. But I well, think what she if it was, was just... really just like a hang glider, and she turned it into a plane, because she could fly with it? Oh no! I mean, she we never saw the invisible plane. We never saw the invisible planes. We don't know. We saw her sitting in the seat. Right, but we don't know what it looked like. She could have been sitting on like a hang glider seat. Hang gliders don't have seats. Maybe her hang glider (laughs) did. Maybe it was like a parasite hang glider. Okay, let's move on. So yeah, I would say that that makes it extra camouflaged if you can't find it, and then you can't even get mad about it because you're like, shit, it's camo. It blends in. Shit, it's the worst. I, I, I bought into this yeah, conundrum. Maybe buy a fucking hunting one next time, an orange one that you're not going to lose. I always thought that's the weirdest thing ever. And I'm not a hunter. I get it. Like, I don't care if you're a hunter. I don't have a problem with people hunting. I just, like, I remember, uh, I remember going hunting with my, uh, my uncle and aunt have a ranch. And they, we went hunting. And my brother shot a deer. And I remember them making him clean it. And I was, like, cleaning an animal. I was like, ah, I'm not a hunter. Like, that's, I'm a pussy. I'm not a, I'm not a hunter. I'm not doing that. I'm not about that life. You I've know, never like, hunted in my life. Deers are, deer look cute. 
I think deer are cute, you know? And it's like, I couldn't kill that thing. It looks like I had thing, a boxer though. that looked like a deer sometimes. And I was like, ah, that's like shooting my dog. Deers know. taste better than they look cute, I'll though. Eat so deer. I'm fine I'll with eat it. venison. I don't, shoot, I don't want to shoot the deer. Oh, I'd, I don't care I'd, if you I'd do shoot it, a I'll deer in the fucking uh, face as long as I can wake up at 11 o'clock and take my sweet ass time and go out and drink while doing it. I just couldn't. Unfortunately, that's not I'm how I'm too much of a works. pussy to be a hunter. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. You know? There's other, I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I could hunt, I could hunt other shit. Like if it was just like asshole animals, like I could do that. If I could, just go, White, if I could take out some hyenas, I'd fucking kill hyenas like a mother. Ron White said it best when he talked about why he doesn't hunt. It's, uh, it's really early. It's really cold. And I don't want to go. And he's probably hung over most mornings. So, I mean, that's part of the, I, early, that's yeah. part of the, I don't want to go. So yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that your camo face field slash shield disappearing does make the camouflage really like that's yes. that's the best you bought the best camouflage which we all know is real tree right mm-hmm. what i i said the best one is real tree right i know that's a brand of like, i it took me forever to realize there's like different kinds of camo like i knew there was military camo but i didn't realize there was like like hunting different kinds of camo which makes sense oh. it's like sometimes you're in lead i don't know sometimes you're not all right i know there's desert woods Right. Sand, then on like that. there's blue camo. I know that, which I guess isn't if you're in the water. I never understood the like blue. That's navy. Camo. That's navy. But like, what are you blending in with? Also, Hides? Air Force. I feel. I feel like uses camo too. And you're like, dude, you're in a plane. Yeah, you're in the plane. I can't see you. <laughs> it's a gray plane. It's gonna stick out anywhere. I can hear it. <laughs> it's loud as fuck. I don't know if you know this about B-52 bombers. They're not quiet. (laughs) (laughs) Usually by the time you hear it, it's over with anyways if they're bombing. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They're so high. The only thing you actually hear is... Just like that. Yeah. That's exactly what bombs sound like, guys. You You should record that. Just like that. Just like that all right um, read our next who's, our, who's got our next Pat? question yeah uh all right this is from uh josh posados at josh underscore posados if corona the or, candidate. he is is coronavirus just a conspiracy made up by home improvement stores to get people to finally finish their home projects now i like this idea this is actually uh when i went to go get the new head for my trimmer i went to home depot I parked, I got out, and I'm starting to walk towards the store. And all of a sudden, I noticed there's a line of about, I don't know. 4,000 people? 50 people. I was going to say 30, but I was like, it was more than 30. 50 people or so lined up. By the way, all of them, not six feet apart. Uh, boy, Josh Posados, if I, like, I'm not trying to make assumptions, but I do believe he may or may not work at a Home Depot or Lowe's. And, oh, uh, from, the, from the videos he sent us? Yeah, he's, he's been sending some videos, which is pretty funny to watch. He's like, go the fuck home. You don't <laughs> need to be here. Where it's like, yeah, what are a thousand people just doing standing outside? Like, what are y'all doing? Just fixing up your homes, I guess? Like, I maybe would, that, I like, like I get, maybe say. it's making your home, like, it makes sense. There's a bunch of people that are stuck at home, and you're like, you know what? I could finish that deck we have outside. Like we've been, I've been meaning to put that deck together. Maybe I'll go uh, waterproof it or whatever it is. So I can, I, I can kind of understand that. I don't think it's conspiracy made up by them, but like they're definitely benefiting off of it. Yeah. No, I'd like to say if you're not a contractor, you don't need to be there. But like I said, I went and got a new head for my weed whacker. But also, when I saw all those people lined up, I said, "Fuck that," and I left. But I also went, you know what? There is a Lowe's not too far from me. And I went to the Lowe's, walked right the fuck in. Dunsky. Yeah. Dude, walked right into the Lowe's, found what I needed. I was in and out in 10 minutes. And eight minutes of that was trying to find in the specific area where I was the right head that I needed. It was easy as shit. For years. So, to find, by, by the way, guys, to find some you, good head. You know what I'm talking if you, about? If you need stuff. <laughs> Don't go to Home Depot. Go to Lowe's. Because everyone thinks Home Depot first. Go to Lowe's. Wait, no free ads. Shorter. No free ads here. We, they're both fine. I mean, they're both fine. I go to, I'm, I'm an Ace Hardware guy myself. Ace Hardware would actually oh. probably be really good, oh, too, okay. because those are more neighborhood stores. And Ace sounds cool. 
Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Whoa, no ads. No free ads. Sorry. I, that's fun. Yeah, I, I get it, but that's, that's just Robert, fun to say. cut that part out. We'll cut that part out. Don't you dare cut that no, out. No My free, singing no voice is like an angelic hey, angel. You want to add? Let's just mute him. It. Yeah. We'll just, Let's just mute him. <laughs> done. He's muted. Yeah, that's right, Pat. You can't talk anymore. Let's see? He's like, damn it. They really didn't. Oh, it's not uh, coronavirus. Oh. Oh, now you, you were actually you, you were you were. <laughs> I was looking down at my phone. Uh, no, it's not a conspiracy by them. It's uh, it's China. <laughs> now we're getting it's, really weird. <laughs> it, no, Next question. It, no, it's no, it's just China being dicks. Like it, it's from China. Like this is not. Oh yeah, it's not a conspiracy. It's because some fuckface ate a bat. Don't do that, guys. Actually, it's already been shown. It wasn't from one of the wet markets, though. It was uh, uh, them trying to do research from one of their labs, and then a guy that was in the lab went to a wet market and spread it from there. I'm 100% on that one. I'm not saying it's not true. I just – I I mean, my understand. explanation of it isn't 100% like – you didn't see hundred you know, percent telling it either. No, but, but then, yeah. no, that's what it is. It's from it's from one of their labs, and a guy that was working there went to a wet market, and he was a su- what they call super spreader. But uh, it wasn't from somebody eating a bat. It was uh, one of their labs, and uh, yeah, just fuck China. You know, back it's in the day, China. back in the this day, is what I- happens when you have communist dictatorships? All right, guys. All right, we're not talking ticks, man. We're not talking ticks. Oh, no, uh, that's that's not ticks. Back in the day when I used to go to the market and all the ladies saw me, we used to call it the wet market. And it wasn't <laughs> anything wet about it. You know what I'm talking about, fellas. You that's guys get it. So problematic, bro. Fellas, you know what I'm talking about. Ladies, take a break. All right. Hey, uh, maybe, maybe some of the fellows were wet too. You don't know. Um, we don't judge here on this podcast. Get a little bit of that pre-cum going. You know what I'm talking about. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, all right. Our next question. <laughs> moving on. Moving on before this gets even more weird. Um, <laughs> Brett Brandon at price of a ZJ. Brett's been a fucking stud on Twitter lately. Brett's like, he's been weighing in. He, uh, I think he even like came to my defense on a couple of things. Like, I like Brett. Brett's, you know, Josh Tree, you're he's definitely so in the lead probably for MVP right now. Like with Todd Voss, but like right up there. Like I would say top three in the uh, MVP for PTG right now this year would be Brett Brandon, Josh Tree, and Todd Voss, who's the defending champ anyways. So Brett Brandon making a name for himself this year on the podcast. Um, He's a cool guy. And Price of his EJ is still, my, bad guy. still maybe my favorite Twitter handle ever. Uh, dude, that's a fucking, dude, once we figured out what it was, we were so confused by price how of to pronounce a, We were like, it Price of As J, Arizona J? I don't know what that means. As soon as he said it, I was like, that's fucking phenomenal. Yep, yep, it was. Um, he, but uh, Brett Brandon says, going outside without gloves and a mask. Social barebacking? Man, I'm barebacking all these hoes every day. Do you feel like like I went like I told you I went to the eye doctor yesterday and I didn't have a mask on she did and I was like I just don't have a mask I have that Bane mask but it's like I look like a fucking weirdo walking around with with the fucking like it makes my voice sound weird I'm gonna talk like Bane regardless of what it sounds like I'm gonna talk like this anyway so I'm like yes my eye I'd like you to look at but you're intentionally doing that I know but it's just a habit it's a habit I have that on that's what I'm gonna you haven't even put on the fucking mask you were given. I, I had the, like, well, she gave me a surgical mask way, today. The, here's the thing. The surgical masks don't do shit. Well, they, they don't know, do anything. No, they do if you have anything. They prevent you from spreading it. They don't necessarily prevent you from catching it. So that is actually no. good for people. No, because you're breathing all that shit out. It catches it with inside. Like, it helps no, you. No, it doesn't. It helps prevent the spread. It, it doesn't help you from getting the spread. It helps prevent the spread about eight inches. If you cough, it's still going through your fucking mask. It's better to have a mask on than not to have a mask on is what I'm going to say. I mean, say. yes, it is better, but to okay, what level? Like, if you, cough, if you cough into that mask, okay, the cough is only Pat's going now, 18 guys. inches FYI. out of your mask instead of 24 inches out of your fucking mask. He read like, one article. It's still any – any, Fact no, now. Any little bit of help – It's me uh, again. Any little bit helps, but it's not oh, – What happened? <laughs> I think his mic cut out. <laughs> Pat, are you there? Can you hear me? Pat, hello. Weird. God. Weird. He's oh. gone. Oh, no, no, he's back. There he's. There <laughs> Next he goes. Next time you do that, I'm gonna pull down my pants and fucking moon you. We'll cut you off then. We'll just. <laughs> I'll screen mute you then. 
Um, <laughs> I would definitely say going outside without gloves and a mask on right now is what we could consider that social bearbacking. I like that. Or Robert, do you know what bearbacking so, is? Would social bearbacking no. be if you just go around will you, hugging? Will you people? do me a favor and Google it and then just read out the description to everybody? Uh, okay. I'm going to open that. That'll the... be a fun game we start playing. It'll be Robert defines things. Let's see what it is. Oh, this is anal intercourse without a condom. <laughs> it's not it's just, just anal. I don't know why that's what it's it means. Just that's intercourse what it says. without a condom. Yeah, it's just in- I looked it up and it said anal intercourse. Well, I mean, it can be anal intercourse. It could be any kind of intercourse. But, kind of, but yeah, I just wanted to hear Rod or uh, Robert read it. It's you know? no rubbers. <laughs> no rubbers. I don't believe in them. I'm allergic to latex. Uh, yeah, so I'd definitely say it's social barebacking for sure. Yeah. Uh, our final question of the week comes from our girl Ashley with an I, <sighs> Wilkins. <sighs> At Buster Healer Mix. Now, this is sort of a boomerang question, but it's also not 100% the same boomerang question. She says, is a boomerang a better triangle than the triangle instrument? No! no the boomerang not. is not a triangle. It's got it's two sort sides. of a triangle. It's, it's sort of a triangle. It's like part of a triangle. It's uh, a uh, triangle. Uh, uh, how many sides does a triangle have? Three. How many sides does a boomerang have? I hope one, you get eight. Two, three. That's a boomerang, bro. Technically, actually, you know what? You're wrong. If you're going to do it that way, it would be the boomerang has four sides. Outside, outside, inside, inside. It would be four sides, it's so just you're like, fucking it's wrong. It's like an incomplete triangle, I guess. It's like an open triangle, we'll call it. But yeah, no, I don't think it's more of a triangle. Like The, the instrument's no. literally called a triangle. No. So like the triangle is definitely more of a triangle. Like you wouldn't, get, you don't get called triangle if you're not a triangle. Which actually, technically, the instrument of triangle it is open ended too. Just a little. It does bit, have though. the three sides, but it has that gap right there because if it didn't have the gap, it wouldn't resonate the same. But no, I mean, it's not more of a triangle. Honestly, because I think the she was really just getting this itself, to say it is like this. She was really just asking this so we would see if like a triangle would make a good boomerang, and I no, think she's just, it, no, she's just no, she's asking this to piss me the fuck off. And the, in general, like if a triangle would be a very annoying boomerang, it wouldn't be a very good boomerang at all. It would go ding 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 ding, ding and then you're, you're like, it's like, god damn it, quit dinging everywhere. Now Pat's throwing his hat. He's getting angry. We got angry Pat over here. Damn yeah, it. I also have to pee really bad again. Well, we're wrapping this bad boy up, but I think, <laughs> I think a boomerang is uh, it is ten not- beers will do that. Do you have 10 beers this podcast? Uh, I've got about half a beer left on this one to be 10. Fuck. I was going for a super beer mid this week, boys. You did a good job. But yeah, I would say a boomerang is not no, a better triangle than a triangle. I did instrument. a great job. A great job. It's been a minute since you said that. But and yeah. also, you guys, you know what? I've had a great time this week. I'm going to say a triangle instrument is a better triangle than a boomerang. Yes. And a boomerang is a better boomerang than a triangle instrument. I fucking hate you. I'm, these are just the questions people ask. Well, oh, I mean, that's true. Fault. Yes, a boomerang is a better boomerang than a fucking triangle because a triangle is not a goddamn boomerang. Well, not a good boomerang. It is a boomerang because you can throw it. Cliff Hogg you. even sort of agreed with us on Monday. I don't want to give away everything. I feel like He's I did, just but... a nice guy. He's going with your crazy Hey, bullshit. well, that's me and him against you, and I think that that's two against one, so who cares? I hope. I fucking hate you. Odds, odds. All right, hey guys, thank you so much for uh, for listening. I hope you guys be sure to tune in on Monday. Tune in on fucking Monday. We got an awesome one. Even if you're not a Big Brother fan, if you've never watched Big Brother, I'm gonna talk Big Brother, but you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. All right, Robert. Like, would, like if you're not a Big Brother fan, you'll still enjoy it, right? Cliff was a fun guy. Yeah. I think the conversation we had was pretty funny, anyways. Like we did talk a little Big Brother game, so there may be a couple of things you're like, I don't really understand this, but like the majority of it was like, what are we doing in quarantine? He's he's an expert. He is literally the best. He was for three months. He was locked in a house where he had no like. We have the news. We can go outside and take a walk. He had a fucking like little backyard he could go in and all this other shit. And Cliff Hogg is a fucking G. And I hope you guys love this episode. This is one of my favorite episodes I've ever done. And I'm a fanboy for Big Brother, but like. This is one of my favorite episodes I've ever done. I had so much fun, and I wish I could have talked to Cliff Hogg for like five days. I could, if, if, if I hadn't stopped it, I could have just continued. Like, we could still be talking right now. From us ten beers. Last night, Robert. That's ten beers. Way to done. Well done. Air high five.
Done. <laughs> Our hands are not matching up. They, they're never Love going you guys. to match up. We're in, Take we're in care. Places. We'll see um, you in uh, on Monday, I guess. Um, I won't Monday. see you. I wasn't there, but uh, yeah. Tune in on Take my care, Instagram. Guys. On my Instagram page, every friggin' night, I believe after, like, you won't tune into this one, but, like, uh, from now on, it'll be uh, 5.30 most nights. If it's different, I'll tweet it out. At Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dan. Robert's at Robert Barbosa03. But I'm on Instagram, at Alex J. Middleton. We got Alex's Race Wars, and we're going to have pop-offs. We're going to see which popcorn pops the fastest, and we can bet on it. So that's a lot of fun. And uh, listen to the Cliff Hog. Pass the gravy, the bonus episode on Monday. Also, shout out to Andrew Green. I was on his podcast, The Time Machine with Andrew Green, which is an awesome podcast. Andrew uh, used to send me videos when he was in high school of him interviewing people, and I'd post it on the buzz sometimes because he was like ahead of his time. You know, he was he was young, but he was he was a go getter. And he's got a podcast, The Time Machine with Andrew Green, and he does he talks about old stuff or just like, he'll talk about something random that happened in the past, like WrestleMania, or uh, I did an episode just about The Office with him. It's a really fun podcast, and he had me on it last week. It just came out. It's called The Time Machine with Andrew Green. We just talked about Tiger King and the show Ozark, and it was fun as fuck, and Andrew Green is awesome. So uh, go check out The Time Machine with Andrew Green, Pass the Great Podcast, bonus episode, and uh, please share us with a friend. Give us that five-star review on iTunes and, or anywhere else you are. Roast us in the comments. Just give us that five-star review. Let us know you did it. You can win a Gravies Award at the end of the year. I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe. Fucking throw away your goddamn gloves if you go to the grocery store, all right? It's not that hard. Be part, of the, be part of the solution, not part of the problem. I love you guys. Stay safe out there. Until we talk to you guys next time, pass the gravy. Bitches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She the hood, Mona Lisa, break a boy into pieces. Had to egg some cheesy bitches out of circle like a pizza. She way too exclusive. She don't shop on Instagram.